It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therod's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. Some astonishing news about the naming of the next version of Windows. We're going to talk about Windows recovery. They've changed how you do it just a little bit. Uh, another change in the Windows Insider program. And then it's Microsoft 365 time. Some nice new features there. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication. LastPass makes enterprise-level security simple for your remote workforce. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, episode 677, recorded Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. Everything's a widget in flutter. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Red Hat OpenShift. Red Hat OpenShift is the Kubernetes platform that provides a trusted foundation for the on-premises, hybrid, and multi-cloud deployments today's enterprises demand. Go to openshift.com slash windows now to check out its features. And by LastPass. Prepare for the unexpected in your business with LastPass, trusted by over 17 million users and 61,000 businesses worldwide. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. Time for Windows Weekly. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what's going on with me. This is. Are, do you notice this? Paul Therott, therott.com, Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com. Do you notice this as the quarantine goes on? And I don't know. Maybe in Lower Mukunji Township, it doesn't go on. But mm -hmm. as it goes on in the rest of the country, yeah. uh, I feel we're all going just a little bit batshit crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. That's the elephant in the room. Yep. Yeah. Everybody a little bit nutty. Hi, Paul. Hi, Mary Jo. I'm just glad you're here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So I'm are actually we. kind of surprised I'm here. <laughs> oh, yeah. That I can even make a calendar appointment at this point. But what yeah. is that? There is this kind of fuzziness of that's subsuming the brain, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. We notice that <laughs> everywhere. Everybody's just like walking around like, you know, staggering like a zombie. Yeah. I say this so much, I don't think people think it's true. But I, I almost every day, not literally every day, but almost every day as I first start to wake up, I think something like, oh, good, it's the weekend. Right. No, wait, it's Tuesday. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, like exactly. I, I, I have some something like that every almost Exactly. Every day. <laughs> We're going nutty. My mom said to me the other day, this is what retirement's like, so get used to it. Every day is the yeah. same. By the way, yes. <laughs> it's I, all a blur. I, that's funny. I said that to my wife. I was like, this must be, this is a good practice for the future, yep. you know. <laughs> Except I work every day. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I mean, you're working in your jammies, which is semi-retired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, don't retire just yet. We need you. Yeah, there's yep. a lot of news today. We need you. There is a lot of news today. Um, where do you want to start? How about 20H2? <laughs> That's, you know, I, yep. we just, we're just barely getting 20H1 out the door. I know. I know. And we're so going to talk about 20H, 21H1 yeah. also. Oh, right. Wow. <laughs> Good luck keeping these all straight. Wow. The funny thing is this is a topic that we have been discussing for... Probably months, but it's come up a lot in yeah. recent days because 2004, which was 20H1, just came out. And I think yeah. last week, I think, we had had a discussion around, you know, if they just put a period in the middle, 20.04, yeah. right? That would that's, have yeah. That's how I type it so that right. everybody knows what I'm talking about. It's so funny yeah. you and should the notion, say that. Yeah. And the notion of just calling it 20H1 has always yeah. seemed like a good idea to me. And I think the... Um, and to others, I'm sure. I mean, and the 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 rationale that for them not doing it has been to date. Well, there's a letter in it. Can't really be a a version number. You know, it's probably it's like, something like, and that's why they don't have a dot either. It's yeah, it's probably it's something like an, to do with a with a with yeah, you know bad file name parsing. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, in yeah. code that goes back to the original version of NT in 1993. I'm sorry, um, you can only <laughs> use numerals. I'm yep. sorry. Well. But then, surprise. It. What? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. We're going to start 
using 20 H1, 20 H2, oh, 21 yeah. H1 oh and God. not the, use these month to day things anymore. So the heavens are opening. I know. Oh, <laughs> well, M there's still, there are still storm clouds on the horizon. Don't worry. It's Microsoft. There are. But, but there are. they, they, this, in this case, I will say, yeah, a little bit of um, logic, maybe common sense. Yep. Yep. Good decision making. <sighs> That's incredible. And it was just presented so casually, like, oh, yeah, and by the way, we're going to start doing this. And I'm like, oh, so you actually listen to people complaining how confusing this was. It's good. Is, is Microsoft <laughs> run like the government, like they have to form a committee and then produce a report Probably. and then have an environmental <laughs> you know, study? Hire and, some testing firm yeah. to verify the result. Yeah, I'm probably. sorry. Don't worry, guys. They're never going to be the next IBM. <laughs> <laughs> they're not? I think. Too late. Too late. <laughs> wow. So I think that's probably what happened, right? They had to study it. Yeah. Investigate it. Yeah. Well, think about it this way. Like, what would 20H2 have been named? 2009? Yep. 20 yep. 2009. Once you get to 2010, you get a problem there because 2010 is the, is said the same yeah. no matter which one you mean. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. And it makes it seem like it's, it's 10 years old. Yeah. It's good. I think that was the it's push. I think that's what I finally realized. But the storm clouds you referred to on the horizon are, they're still going to have a cutesy consumer-friendly name for these things, right? So they couldn't just leave it at 20H1, 20H2. It's going to be 20H2 and also the October 2020 update or whatever it gets called, right? And also the internal code name, which is yes. some kind of metal. Manganese. What? Manganese. Yeah, yeah so there's still three names instead of four, right? <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times I have written a plea to Microsoft that has appeared on my site that says, please, <laughs> the name of the update is not the name of the Windows version. It's how you get to that Windows version. Yeah. That's and insensible. Microsoft writes it that way. It's just, it's it's so, Yeah, you got to understand yeah. the ADD nature of your audience here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're nerds here. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there. I mean, that's yeah. true. I think that it is the case that uh, technology folks tend to be a little OCD, and that's you well, know they're that's technology right. folks. Yeah, what, why why can't they do it right? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. I, wouldn't that bother the people writing these blog yeah. posts? I'm sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it does. But they just they're they're so cowed. They're so bad down now. They just go. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh. But you know what? I'm glad about. I'm glad they just got this out there now instead of dragging this process on until right before the thing came out right and so we already know what the name is instead yeah. of like a yeah. week before like and here's the name right this is no, a I, huge yeah. story and, uh, I, this, this is so big i'm so happy i, think it is. I really do. i think so too and um you know tied to this uh, yesterday i think when they made this announcement they also released what is now we'll just call 20h2 into the slow ring of the insider yep. program right, right. um Meaning that, you know, as Mary Jo has been saying for a while now, like, you know, and, and this was like going back a couple of months, you know, Mary Jo was like, guys, I don't think you understand. Like, this thing's done, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously, they're, uh, you know, fixing it, you know, fixing things, but they're not really adding. It's not like major new features. Right. Don't you think they are a little gun shy, though? Because here we go, uh, as I'm sure you will report. Well, should be. There are quite a few <laughs> issues with 2004. Yes. Oh, yep. and my God, how did I not put this in the notes? <laughs> the Did I not just put this in the notes? Oh, no, I did. Oh, sorry. It's at the end of the section. Um, the other big news here is that as we hoped and as we re more recently have predicted uh, yep. or guessed, you know, whatever, uh, 20 and H2 cool. will be a minor <laughs> cumulative update Good. like yep. 19 H2 or what was called 1909. They're going to promote it as a feature update. It is not a feature update. It will it will require a reboot, but it'll be super quick, uh, and it will be basically a fit and finish update to um, what we must now still call 2004 because they're not retroactively renaming that, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> right. And that's the way it should be, you know. That yep. and yep. I, if it weren't for the fact, as we're going to discuss soon, that there are major issues still with 2004. Um, in many ways, yeah. this is a good year for Windows, just like last year was, despite the problems yeah. we see in both cases. Because I, they're settling on a release schedule that is, I, I feel like, a, a good compromise between what I really want, and I think what most people really want, and what Microsoft appears to really want. Um, right. 
And, and so two things, two things I'm going to interject here. The reason they can't call this a cumulative update, even though it is one, is because of the servicing stack, right? So oh. if they call it a cumulative update, it gets a different yeah. amount of months of support than if they call it but, a feature update. I know. They on. made up these Microsoft rules. Microsoft <laughs> invented these rules. They could, they did. It doesn't matter. It's they did. It's Right. So you know the I'm, 20, I'm the 20 H2 gets 30 months of support. And so this is the release. The H2 releases are the ones that the IT department wants, right? Yes. Gets extra testing, has longer amount of support. This is the one they want. They don't care well, about the first one of the I just, year. Okay, so much. please understand right? the, the the nature of my complaint here because I feel like the system is good and it's fine. And, yeah, and me too. I, yeah. I don't – in one way, I don't mind that they're calling it a feature update. It's literally yeah. not a feature update, but it is – the next version of Windows 10, like you said, supported for a longer period yep. of time. Good news yep. all around. Yep. The problem is, the reason I criticize this is um, people inside and out of Microsoft will use this CU as a feature update kind of chicanery as evidence that their system is working. <laughs> when in fact, yep. <laughs> this proves that it is not working because they can't do two feature updates a year reliably and they switch to this system right. as a compromise. And again, also, it's, it, you know, it's a win. I know. Also, one other thing to point out, it only works like a cumulative update if you're on 2004, right? That's so if you're on something earlier than that and you're going to 20H2, it's going to look more like a traditional feature update and will, take longer and be bigger, right? right. Yeah. And by the way, that's good too because otherwise what you'd have to do is install whatever, you know, you'd probably install 2004 first, yeah. which would be a right. major feature update. And then when yeah. that thing kind of came, came, came around, you'd re install the CU that is really 20H2 yeah. and then reboot again. You know, the, it, it's that's absolutely fine. Like that too is yeah. – that's good. It, it's fine. Yeah. It's a good system. And if you, the other way to look at it, and this was the case last year with uh, 1909, is that what this thing really is in this case is 2004 – with another yep. six months of testing, and yep. you know, which I think we're going to find out soon, it, it needs, it needs. It. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> and uh, and and a handful of new features. Apparently, I don't right. know that there's all much there. Right, there but, can uh, be new features. There will be mm -hmm. maybe some smaller features, maybe more enterprise focused new features like security features. Right, so there'll be some, probably. It's good. Not just. It's good news. Though. It's it's right. good news. It is. It is. Plus, you know, the other thing I like that they did is they're changing how 20H2 is being tested by insiders, right? So uh, <laughs> they're not doing that A-B testing thing now, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, 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 yes. You know, right. Well, so let's, so, let's um, before you want to save, save that, that for when we talk about insiders. Oh, right, because we kind of put this in the wrong place. Let's let's yeah. uh, bring that to the front now, because I think, I think this okay. is a big, important discussion that weighs into this, right? So, um, right. And uh, you can, I mean, I don't know how you want to approach this, but I mean, they're basically renaming the ring system, the rings in the ring yep. system, the channels, which matches the way browsers yep. like Chromium and, and Edge are. And I think and they're, and, oh, and they're making a related change to Office. Yeah. Functionally speaking, for most, no, for all individuals, um, I, I, they are not streamlining, changing, evolving, <laughs> the you know, at least not today in almost any way whatsoever. It's literally just a name change. Um that said, Except, there is one very interesting change. Yeah, what do you think yeah, the one interesting a, change is? Because I want to hear. So, what you in think the it release is. preview ring, which is now the release preview channel for yep. businesses, they're actually going to support that as if it were right. a shipping stable version of Windows. Yeah. Now, the reason that's interesting is that I don't think they've seen a lot of engagement with businesses, and by doing yeah. this, businesses can safely put a subset of their users testing the next version. Probably mostly for compatibility reasons, right? Not so much yeah. for um, like what the new features are to get excited about yeah. them, but rather right. to make sure the compatibility make sure everything works. Because, yeah, yeah, because that's been a kind of a surprise problem with 2004, by the way. But yes, it has. Um, <laughs> yeah. So by supporting right. it, they're kind of taking away the element of danger uh, yeah. in doing that. And and I, will that result in more businesses joining the Insider program? I'm not entirely sure, but but to we'll me, see. that's right. actually that's an interesting change. It doesn't is. impact any the other. Individuals. So you know what the other change, and maybe I'm wrong about this, and I'm sure you'll tell me if I am, but um, I feel like the other thing they changed besides the name. So, okay, first the name change we should go over. Fast ring and skip ahead become dev channel, 
those are now known as dev channel. Slow ring becomes beta channel. Release preview ring becomes release preview channel. But the other thing they did in that blog post when they talked about the renaming that I thought was good is they spelled out the, the um, new slow ring, which is the beta channel, and the release preview channel. Those things are going to be showing you they're going to be pegged to the OS, basically, right? So when we say the, the yeah. beta channel is on 20H2, it actually is what they think is going to ship as 20H2, right? So <laughs> and that has, I feel like they didn't articulate that. I feel right. like they I, didn't I articulate say, that, right? <laughs> so here, here's the thing. So last February, when they switched, it's they surprised everybody, and they switched the fast ring on to, I guess it was 2004. Um, yeah. One of the things they started talking about a long time ago is this notion that the fast ring won't always be locked to a single version of Windows. Right. Yeah. Um, but by the time the, 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 the subsequent two releases hit the slow ring, they yep. were specific. So it technically hasn't changed, but I, you're right. I don't think that they articulated that clearly. So remember a year ago last yeah. summer, last summer, which was a year ago, we were waiting to hear about what the plans were for 19H2 because they were really, they could never kind of address that. Yeah, and when they finally announced what they were doing, they were like, "Yeah, it's it's going to be the system we have today for 20 H2. Same thing. Yep. It's a CU we're going to mm -hmm. you know promote as a feature update. Mm -hmm. A couple of new features, nothing major, but yep. it's going into the when it went into the slow. It went that became the slow ring. So last year, mm -hmm. were a bunch of big a bunch of big changes to the um, Insider program, but no name changes. I think this year, what right. you're seeing, what you're describing, is a formalization of what they started last year. Yes, agree. And you know, to me, the one thing they could have done to make this clearer, and I'm a little curious why they didn't do it, is they should explain how this works from the new code name perspective, right? I know they don't like to talk about code names, but this yeah. would make things really clear, I feel like. So if they said, here's how we build Windows now, right? We're on the Azure schedule. We build it on their schedule, which is semesters. So from, mm -hmm. from J January to June, that's a semester, and from June to December is the second semester. So the reason you're getting this fast ring bill today um, is because we've moved now to the second semester, and you're getting the first builds off the branch that is codenamed Iron. And the reason so you're just, in the slow ring, right? Sorry, sorry. I just want um, go ahead. Technically yep. speaking, I, what they're getting in the fast ring today is 21H1 which isn't really the second semester, right? Isn't it next year's first semester? Or am I, did I, nope. oh, I'm sorry, you didn't no, school year. Yeah. Sorry, you got it completely right, so, I apologize. Right, so, 20, <laughs> so, so 21 H1 is being built in 2020 from June yes. to December, right? I'm, I'm so sorry, yep, you yep. got it right. No, that's okay. It's super confusing, but I feel like, why didn't you just say this, Microsoft? Because I think this would clear it up in a lot of people's minds if you said, now we're building the second semester, in the second semester of this calendar year for... The first build yeah, of next think year. Think of it as That's a school doing, semester. Right? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think that would have been the one thing they could have added to changing the names that might have helped people get what's being tested you know, you where. You don't have to what. say semester. You could say half, right? Yeah, you could say half. Yeah. Yep. Oh, right. And by the way, that's, you know, we kind of glossed over that. One of the nice yep. things about the H1, H2 naming is you're not going to get all the people, well, you called it 1909 and you oh, didn't yeah. actually ship it oh, yeah. yeah. and then you didn't really yeah. ship it until November. By the way, then, you that, know, that is us. Right. Okay, I'm just saying. I, I, I know, I, yep. I'm imitating. I know, we do it all the time. <laughs> I, I, just to be clear, <laughs> that funny voice, <laughs> that's us. Out, I'm the one standing there doing the voice. But, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, this, I, I, again, this is why this is such a good idea. It. Yeah. It eliminate it, it gives them a nice fuzzy six month period where they can't be wrong, you know. And look, they're Microsoft; yeah. they'll screw it up, but um, they'll have a lot more time to do that. And I think that's that that too is a good reason to choose H one H two over the thing we were yeah. talking about, which is the point oh one or point oh whatever. Um, so the point system. And then, yeah, the other thing we were talking about about how they're changing and getting away from A B testing in the in the slow ring slash the yes, beta I'm channel. Sorry, right. Let's get back to this. That. Also, yeah. is really important. Right. So in the remember last year when they did this, they had they were shipping builds to insiders and some <laughs> had all the new features turned off and some had them all on. And then they switched it and then they were turning them on and off. And everybody was like, what are you doing right now, Microsoft? So instead, it, what yeah. they're going to do, Sorry. this is so much better, right? 20. So mm -hmm. with, the, with the first 20 H2 build that came out this week, they said, if you're in that ring and you want it, you have to opt in and get it. And once you get it, we're going to give you the, the subsequent um, refreshes of the test builds through Windows Update. Just to be clear, 
if I had this machine, I would pull a string and confetti would fall down right now because <laughs> I have been begging them to do this for the past, whatever it is, 15 months, 18 months, whatever. When That's you as a, an individual <laughs> sign into the Windows Insider program, review your options and you pick yeah. fast string or whatever it is you're picking, you should get the thing you picked. If yeah. you're not going to get it, don't let me choose it. Like right. for them to A, B, test, like some people are going to get this and some people, what the, no, that's the point of the testing. Like <laughs> I, I, I've okay. never agreed with that. And I, I, you know, you can tell I'm excited. But we don't, but I mean, we don't know if they're, we don't know if they're totally abandoning A, B testing. Like, will there be a time when a fast ring slash, um, what yeah, do they call it now? So, Dev right. channel build know. comes out <laughs> with some features on and some off. We don't know. We don't know that, but. They're not going to have a canary know. channel, are they? That's what a well, lot of people were asking I, yesterday. Yeah. So they have one, here's the, right? Here's the interesting side note to this. Uh, in the post announcing this change, they said, look, so basically today, each of the channels we have, Microsoft has, uh, map to the rings that we used to have. It's very simple. This is this, this is this, whatever. However, we yeah. reserve the right in the future to add channels. And I don't think Canary is, well, maybe Canary would be the channel. But this might be the op the option that they have to add a channel so we can test Windows 10X. Let's oh, oh please except, I wait, would love no. that. I think no, no, don't turn it down. No. <laughs> no, no. Here's so Killer first, teams. I don't think it'll be called Canary because there is a Canary ring already for Windows 10, and it means the people inside Microsoft testing oh, it, okay. right? Yeah, no, no, it doesn't have to be Canary. I, I mean, it could be any. They could you want to call it Oriole or like? Oh, Cardinal. I like it. Going with the birds. <laughs> like okay. Yogurt. <laughs> yogurt. <laughs> yeah, I, but okay, but you bring up an interesting point. How are they going to test 10x as it comes out, right? And is it going to just yeah. go out to the fast ring, or is it going to only? Oh, I doubt be that. Set separated out i think so the bits are going to be in there right like are they? i think people who, i think people like Raphael who dig through um 10 in the fast Those ring people. are going to start seeing the the references to 10x at some point in the near term right yeah yeah um, maybe as soon as today because maybe also today we got our first ever build of windows 10 version 21 h1 so right. it, 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 it kind of it, Mary Jo basically said this, but just so it's clear, if you were in the fast ring, which will soon be renamed to what Dev Channel, Dev Channel, yeah, Dev Channel, um, mm -hmm. you are now on 21H1. If you opt into it, I think. I, well, that, no, that, that was for the slow ring, so I'm not sure how they're handling right. it, but um, I should go look at that actually. Uh, not on yeah. this machine, um, right? If you're so if you're anyway, in the fast, fast ring, ring, I think you you just H1. get it, right? Yeah. Okay, that could be. If you're in the slow think, ring. Uh, you can opt in and you will get 20 H2. Yep. Right. I think you actually have yep. to accept it to get it. You do. It'll be off. You do. But you. Have, That's right. correct. Yep. Now release preview. What does that mean now? <laughs> <laughs> like what are right. those guys? So I know. So release preview is the one you were talking about that is supported by Microsoft. And that's for corporations who are like, okay, this thing's going to come out pretty soon. I want to test it before it comes out for compatibility reasons. All right, so I'm going to have to that's guess because they didn't say anything changed there. So I'm guessing if you're on the release preview today, you're probably on 2004. Yeah. You're just getting app updates at this point. Yep. However, right. as 20H2 gets closer to uh, being finalized later in the summer, I guess, they will, yep. well, they will. They will put, I assume, uh, that's the way they've done it in the past. They'll put um, uh, 20H2 into the release preview release preview. Channel. Yep. Mm -hmm. That should when be pretty change soon. Actually, happening. When 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 do we switch to so channels? So the name Does change happen? happens. The name change happens later this month. So okay. soon. Um, and I guess all the changes in terms of how it gets delivered to people are happening now. Like it's starting to happen. Yeah. Yep. I, I feel like we're missing. We got through a bunch of stuff there in a very short period of time. <laughs> it seems like this was <laughs> fairly momentous. Um, Mostly really good news, I would say. Yeah, I would say so too. Um, yeah. Welcome news. So we should we should talk about what's new in any of these builds. So twenty H two, it was just bug fixes and like minor updates, right? But twenty one H one got three new features that are worth talking about today. Not if they're related um, to Linux, they're not. <laughs> yeah, well, are they, they are. So <laughs> <laughs> Leo will care about all of these, I predict, or at oh, least I'm some of them. Well, before okay. we get to those. Yes. Can I do a break? Sure. Since you since you teased me like that, <laughs> since you gave me you know 
Something to stay hope. tuned for. Hope. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Hope. Actually, do do uh, go ahead. <laughs> Anything? No, nothing. It is a uh, time to tell us about tell you about Red Hat. Well known for Linux, but they also are very well known for something called OpenShift. In fact, Evil John in our chat room says, "Oh, I love OpenShift." <laughs> Don't let his handle fool you. He's not evil. He's actually quite a nice guy. Uh, a lot of you hear Red Hat, you think Linux. I've been wearing a Red Hat for years. In fact, I think Red Hat Linux was the first Linux we ever installed in the screensavers. That is certainly how they made their name with the Linux distro that served enterprise well for over eight dot releases. That's, uh, and, and I think, boy, I think that might be, it wasn't the first Linux I installed, but it was the first Linux I liked. How about that? Does that, does that work? What Red Hat did for Linux is now doing for container orchestration with Red Hat OpenShift. Red Hat OpenShift combines the best of Kubernetes with additional features like service mesh and operators, serverless, and more. Uh, so if you're looking at orchestrating your containers, you're looking maybe at Kubernetes, try OpenShift. It helps developers and sysadmins do their work with greater ease and automation. I'm actually, this is, this is probably the hottest new technology right now. No downloads or configuration required to get your hands on a cluster. Don't you like that? Uh, the tutorials aren't gated, so before you install, before you buy, you can read and learn and see if it fits your needs. You don't have to give your contact information. No one's going to email you. Uh, or call you afterward. You're not getting on some mailing list. It's really the way to go and read about it and see if it does what you need. I bet it does. For those of you who've heard of OpenShift and want to give it a try, they have pre-configured OpenShift instances that you can access from your browser. So you can actually try OpenShift. Isn't that awesome? If you're at all curious about Red Hat OpenShift, if you're using Kubernetes uh, and containers, if you're doing orchestration right now, this is something you should look at. Evil John says... Thumbs up. <laughs> uh, you want to check out the features, go to openshift.com slash windows. OpenShift. I'm sure you've you've heard about OpenShift, but now you can actually try it without giving up any, you know, email information or anything. No salesman will call, as they used to say. Openshift.com slash windows. It is definitely worth doing. Evil John says, I actually had a red fedora given to me by Red Hat back in the day. So do I. I don't know where it is. I gotta find my red mm -hmm. fedora. He said uh, he built the first JVM for Intel's Itanium CPU on Red Hat Linux. So Evil John's got a long relationship with Red Hat. Uh, if yours is just beginning and you want to know more about OpenShift, openshift.com slash windows. <laughs> Anyone else miss Lindos? Remember Lindos? Windows. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was a Linux <laughs> distro designed to look like Windows and run was Windows like apps. Michael somebody. Yeah, what was his name? He was kind mm -hmm. of a, I don't know. He was the <laughs> mp3.com guy, wasn't he? Yeah. I'm not going to say anything. He was a nice guy. Was he? That wasn't, what <laughs> yeah. I, that wasn't how I remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. Just, you know. You remember Microsoft versus Lindos, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The trademark thing, yep. and yeah, yeah, yeah. So on we go with the show. Do you you teased it? Go ahead, let's do it. Okay. So um, today, the fast ring slash dev channel build that came out from Microsoft has three new Linux features Whippy! for the Windows oh, subsystem sorry. for Linux. Right. Contain, contain, contain my containers. Um, Here's the three. The first one is called GPU Compute. So it lets WSL2 take advantage of GPU access. And this is really important, especially yes. for people doing X. machine learning and data science, yeah. um, those kind of and, workloads. And GUIs, yep. And GUIs. WSL install um, is a new command that lets you install WSL with a, th with a single command. And WSL update lets you manage the Linux kernel version uh. used by WSL2 distributions. That's all in today's fast ring build. Okay, so when they announced WSL two, not way back when, but when two hundred four yeah. was completed, twenty oh four. Yeah, I just wrote about this. What I say, twenty oh four, whatever, twenty oh four. Yeah. Um, uh, there is kind of a convoluted way that you have to go about doing everything you just described, right. and they promise that in the future this will be easier. You actually have yep. to run like a PowerShell command to see what version you're on, and then if you can switch to version two, you might have to 
manually like go to the Microsoft website and download it, an update. And then yep. once you do that, and they're like, yeah, we'll, get, we'll handle this a little more seamlessly in the future. And we'll it sounds like it that's out. Yeah. <laughs> kind of what yeah. this is. All right. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And they talked about the GPU access um, and the GUI capabilities at build, I believe, um, yep. or right around right. then. So this is them making good on it already. And yeah. Yeah, this is and part of the Iron access, Branch, right? Yes, yep. And then it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Otherwise, um, the new fast ring build today, 21H1, it's all like a lot of bug fixes. That's what's in it. And that's what you kind of expect when you start doing early builds of the next branch. So, yeah. Right. Cool. Hmm. Yeah. So you're going to be on the fast ring dev channel, Leo, or nope. are you going to be on a more conservative <laughs> ring? No, I'm going to stick with the rolling distribution of Manjaro Linux, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I'm, okay. I'm thrilled they're doing this. It's great because it gives lots of recognition to Linux. And then a lot of Windows users who try Linux will say, why am I using Windows? I could just be using Linux and then your jobs will be at jeopardy. That's not the way I want to go. Let me think about You're this. You're desktop Linux. It's let coming. Me, let me rethink this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. This is um, smart of Microsoft. I do really think. I mean, it is. I do really think it's, this it's, is it a is smart. Yeah. trend in it's an good. interesting direction. Yeah. Yep. You know, look, I mean, there's been a lot of um, confusion and uh, worry in the Windows or Microsoft developer space. You know, what's the way forward? We've talked a lot about UWP versus whatever, all these Win32 APIs and blah, blah, blah. And is there going to be like a one thing that works for everybody and this kind of thing? And I, the thing I keep coming to, and I wish Microsoft would just say this, is like, look, Windows is the place where you go to run everything. It just all works. It yeah, that's, matter. yeah. As, yeah. As a developer, you can choose what you want to use. And as a user, you don't have to think about it because it all works, you know? I think they also realize that, honestly, over the next five to ten years, it's all going to the cloud anyway. And, yeah, and yeah. operating systems probably have a different meaning in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we've matter. said that for so long, though. It like, operating systems don't matter, it's, right? Well, yeah. but they already <laughs> don't matter. Honestly, one of the reasons... Yeah. I can use Linux is because I'm, you know, I'm using a br Firefox yeah. and Linux looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. right. Most mm -hmm. of the right. stuff I do, I can do in any operating system. And so it's just, yeah. you know, it's uh, the idea of saying, you know, raising the flag. Well, I am a Windows user. I'm a Linux yeah. user. I'm a Mac, Mac user is meaningless. And it's, yeah. it's, it's just that that's changed. And it's just going to mm -hmm. continue in that direction. That's why Satya Nadella is brilliant. He that's rec why he <laughs> recognized that. As a TikTok user. <laughs> <laughs> Not Zin, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 this is clearly happening. It's just this stuff takes time. It does. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now we're going to talk anyhow. about stuff that's not as good news, perhaps. No, don't <laughs> say, say Actually, that. Actually, no, a lot of this is good news. Okay. Um, no, it is. It is. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, some of it's, well, yeah, the reason it exists is bad, but the fact it's being fixed is good, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't remember when this happened, but you guys may remember uh, a very convoluted conversation I had on this show a year ago-ish or whatever it was, the last fall or something about the 19 different Windows 10 recovery options and how confusing that is. And and one of the yeah. real confusing things was that if you as a user were trying to figure out, like, I want to reinstall the OS, like, how do I do that? Um, there were two major places in the UI where you could find a, a way to do that, and they were different, which is really strange. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, most Windows 10 users are familiar with the, um, uh, I guess it's called reset this PC functionality, that's in settings, in the settings app. So if you go to update and security and then uh, da, 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 recovery, sorry, yeah, you'll see a reset this PC option. Um, in all currently shipping supported versions of Windows 10, except for 2004, there's also an application that's now called Windows Security, although it's had different names over the years too, because of course it has. And you could access a, um, a feature through there that would also go, give you uh, a recovery function called Fresh Start. And those things had differences that kind of don't matter, but um, I, in the book, I cover all of them, or I cover most of them, I should say, because some of them are superfluous, but I explain what the differences are and all that kind of stuff. But, the, you know, it's confusing because there's just so many of them. Mm -hmm. So in Windows 10 2004, as it turns out, they got rid of that second option from the Windows security app. Now everything goes through that main uh, reset this PC mm -hmm. option that's in settings. That's and that's the way it should have always that's been. That's good. Yeah. So yeah. you can still get the... The functionality of Fresh Start, if you want it, 
But I guess the downside to this is one of the neat things about Fresh Start is it allowed you to get a clean version of Windows that had none of your PC makers customizations. Mm -hmm. Now that will no longer be possible through. Oh, through really? The, no, oh. We'll hold, I, I, through Windows. Through now, the oh, through Windows. Yep. Yeah, if a you PC want maker it, anyone can do it. Well, and, and, and no, anyone can get it. I mean, you could get it a couple of different ways, but one way would be to if you have set up media of your own, um, you can use yeah. that. If you have. If you don't, you can just download the ISO. You make it. You make a mm -hmm. USB key, install it from yeah, there. That's yeah. pure. You could way. always you do that. Get it. That's nothing. Yeah, anyone yeah. can do yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. If you want to learn how, uh, I have a cheap book that will teach you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of it? Uh, Windows 10 Field Guide, I think. I barely ever talk okay. about it, but it's uh, <laughs> leanpub.com. <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. I, you know, uh, but you could so you could still do the fresh start under the reset my PC. The will it say though, fresh start? No, you have to kind of step through it. So it basically, they've just what it basically does is gives you a cloud restore option that it adds that. So we know okay. there's been a cloud restore option, okay. but they've incorporated fr fresh start is basically that. The difference is now even if you do a cloud restore, a PC maker technically has the ability to customize that to the right. PC. Right. So it, it's it's in there, you know. And by the way, for most people, you're probably not going to. Most people just want to get it back. It's fine. Honestly, most of the time, all you're going to be doing is uninstalling a couple of apps, whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, and I, I, the important thing here is they've consolidated the options. It was stupid how many. They still have a few other ways to do it. But, I mean, it was stupid that there were two places in the UI to access two different but almost completely identical, almost completely identical recovery tools. So this is this makes more sense. Yeah. I, I I got to just make a general comment that I feel like one of the most confusing things about Windows is how many different ways you can do everything. And I think yeah. fewer is better. I do. Yep. So this is this goes back 25 years more or whatever. I mean, the problem for Windows is that the Mac was always very specific and Apple always kind of tried to do one way to do everything. Yeah. And Microsoft, you know, and it's no longer true anymore, but at the time had a much more diverse user base. And they had to have different ways to do different things. There, there are command line ways to do all this stuff. I mean, there are yeah. all kinds of different tools, different avenues, different ways you might go find stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Microsoft, in trying to accommodate everyone, has made things confusing and convoluted. Yeah. And that, yeah. That's, that's been a problem, you know, forever. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, now, what, what about, we, we talked about this yesterday, I think, on Security mm -hmm. Now. And as you know, Steve mm -hmm. Gibson loves to mock Windows <laughs> users, <laughs> even though he is okay. one, right? He is one. Right, he is one. <laughs> um, but that makes it okay. We were, t we were talking about um, all of the uh, Patch Tuesday updates. There were more than 120 of them again this month. Mm -hmm. But I pointed out, and I think it's really important, the real question isn't how many updates Microsoft's doing. It's how many updates fix things introduced in Windows 10. Right. And how many updates yes. fix yeah. legacy problems. Because you want a company. Right. In fact, I don't mind if there's 100 patches that cover all versions of Windows. It means they're working hard to find all of the problems, the mm -hmm. legacy problems. I do worry if there are yeah. new problems being in, you know, introduced right. all the time. And it sounds like way, this printer problem is one that was introduced. That's right. That's another issue we've had for a long time at Windows, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I forget now, but there, I know there are still many admin IT pro types who still point back to Windows 2000 SP2, if I'm not mistaken, that screwed everything up and they never trusted <laughs> Windows Update ever again. You know? that, it was, forget it's it. It's just, you know, and by the way, that was 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. um, but yes, unfortunately, uh, you could point to this printer issue we're referencing and say, uh, maybe this proves it still happens. But yeah, the, uh, Microsoft last week acknowledged there were some issues um, with printing. It's interesting because it kind of escalated. <laughs> Turns out it was mm -hmm. on all supported Windows uh, 10 versions. Um, it was a weird then, problem, too. Yeah, I think it was actually a set of problems, too. It's very strange. Like It, it impacted different yeah. types of printers different ways. And Here's, um, here's what Steve said that... Yeah. The, if if you turned off, wait a minute, if you shut down Windows with the printer turned on mm -hmm. and then turned up the Windows back on or rebooted it, I don't know if you had to do a full power off or if you just a reboot, then the printer port would be, the USB port would be invisible mm -hmm. and you wouldn't be able to print. <clears throat> the fix is to turn the printer on before you boot. And... <laughs> Okay. 
Well, now that, that doesn't sound good. good. I don't. Just install an update. So. Oh, there is an update out. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness. Okay. Yeah, they've already fixed yeah. it. The goofy thing is, it's a manual update. This is not something you're going to oh. get through Windows Update. So you have to go find it. I, you know, I have links to my article. But, it, it must be yeah. a driver thing, right? Uh, it says on the yeah. issues. It says print spooler might oh, print spooler. spooler might error or close unexpectedly when attempting to print. It looks That's like you got uh, something it. jammed into your LPT1 port. Uh, we'll just <laughs> gonna, blow a little air in there. I just I was oh, trying yeah. to figure out, well, what does the fix mean? I mean, what does that imply about this? If your I, printer's turned on when you start up Windows, it'll see it. But if it's off, you can't turn it on and then it'll recognize it. it sounds like it's something to do with loading that, auto-loading that, that driver. That's I don't know. Weird. I, I believe 2004 was impacted by this. I also believe 2004 has not received an update yet. So I think the updates are for 1803 and 1809 oh. and then 1903 and 1909, which are the same update, right? Because it's the same release. So they've released three separate sets of fixes for those three versions of Windows 10. Uh, presumably, this stuff will make its way to Windows Update by next month. Um, and I assume, unless it's not impacted, but I thought it was, uh, that 2004 will also be... It is impacted. I'm looking at the list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Picked the wrong week to test a new printer. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh but, boy. Uh, I'm just waiting for yeah. my mom to call me because her printer is always connected and this will, this is going to happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there is kind of an increase. But so, in okay. Can I, can I say what you normally would say? How come this wasn't yeah. found during testing? You know, that makes me sound really negative, Mary Jo. And <laughs> Does it? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you've got to assume a bunch of people who tested 2004 oh, oh, and so, so, other so, releases sorry. had this. Well, actually, um, I think this bug was introduced by an update. So, Oh, oh I see. Okay, it this, came after yeah, the, 2004. It was this spans different okay. versions of Windows 10. So, right, right. You're right. Um, yeah, it's a kind of a regression okay. problem, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay. it's patched now, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the midst yeah. of getting patched. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So if you're not on 2004 and you want to get a fix for this, um, I have links in the um, in the article I wrote about it, so you can cool. find it on my site. Cool. What else is wrong? Oh yeah. Um, so just to, <laughs> this is the new today. section we're going to do on Windows Weekly. What Call. is wrong what today? What else is wrong? <laughs> what has been wrong since last Wednesday? Well, <laughs> funny you ask. Um, Microsoft, you know, and by the way, it's funny. Like Microsoft just puts up these like support notes. That, you know, they, it's not like they're going to announce problems, but I mean, right. that's what we have you for, Paul. I know it's awful. So uh, if you're using storage spaces, I mean, God help you because storage spaces, but whatever. But if you are using this feature, uh, it's broken now because of 2004. So I swear to God, there is no workaround. There is no fix. If you run check disk, you could potentially screw up all of your data. <gasps> They're what? basically, I know it's unbelievable. <laughs> They're basically providing instructions to switch everything, all of your data that's in storage spaces to read only mode until there could be a fix so it doesn't get screwed up. Yeah. Oh. So, now, so you know what? This isn't even listed in known issues on the release information page. I don't see it. It should be. It should be. Okay, so it's all kinds of things wrong with this, but um, remember one of the things that they, remember we did the little feature on features that were um, um, deprecated and removed in 2004? Yeah. yeah. One of them was dynamic disk. Now, that's, these things are not directly comparable, but... You know, in the old days, you mm -hmm. know, people had different old-fashioned tools to manage storage and so forth. One of them yeah. just disappeared. Storage spaces is, uh, you know, it's they're they kind of overlap. I mean, it's they're not exactly the same, but um, also a legacy tool, just a newer legacy tool. It's still managed through a control panel. They don't have a modern. Actually, am I right about that? What is yeah, storage sure. spaces? What is what do you do with that? So storage spaces is kind of like a poor man's raid. It's a way to uh. combine storage from two or more different drives in different ways. And so um, typically for data redundancy. So one of the things you might do is have two identical drives. Oh, neat. Put them in storage. But, you know, it's, it's there, just another way to version do. of raid. Kind yeah. Of. It's been around for a while. I mean, I don't remember exactly when it arrived, but I'm, it probably Vista time frame, something like that. I'm sure it was a a server tool first and right. then it made its way to the client. It's look, there's no average user on earth who would ever stumble upon this UI and think this was a good idea and, and start using it. This is power users, um, 
not just leave it at that power users and, and, and for individuals. Yeah. So, but I, re- if I mean, if you're not sports, space, <laughs> don't use therapist. jet check disc. It feels like I that know. should be, like, they should like mention that to people. I, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what to say. I, <laughs> this is, well, there's a reason I use a train crash as the promo graphic for this story. <laughs> this is, it's kind of it's just unbelievable. Like, listen, we and this is a conversation we've absolutely had on the show before. We, you can forgive all kinds of problems, right? Um, we just talked about a problem that Microsoft introduced to printing because of an update they made to something else. It's like, okay, we can forgive this. This is people's data, yeah. and they specifically we are using storage spaces to protect it. Yeah, like this is this is the it's technology pretty used to protect their data. Yeah. Um, that's really serious. Now. Mary Jo might, or I might say, how come they didn't get this during testing? It's a solid question, yeah. but I don't feel like a lot of people it's are using storage feature. Yeah, I know, um, yeah. but still, it's it should be on the release information page. Yes, I could not agree more. And I'm sure it, as mm-hmm. of whenever they figured this out, they put a blocker into Windows Update detecting whether you're using storage spaces. And if you are, they're not bringing you this update anymore. So hopefully this didn't go out to yeah. too many people. I'm guessing it didn't, you know. But again, it, geez, it's like we test right. this stuff, right? Like, don't we test stuff? I know. I mean, on the top of the release information page, it says we're rolling 2004 out to more users and, and people who are seeking it. You know, you're going to get it. But they also say um, that they're using machine learning to make sure who should get it and who shouldn't. So hopefully they're catching this. I right? hope the machine's Easily. learning. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't yeah. necessarily yeah, give me is, great uh, confidence. <laughs> Not the best no, this is very concerning, and it's the concerning that it's not on that page. Is not to install at all. <sighs> I, well, I keep the, checking yeah, to see if I can, but the more errors that are showing up with 2004, I'm yeah, like, you know, what? I really don't need to be seeking here. Somebody <laughs> asked you in the uh, Twit community uh, forums whether it'd be worth <laughs> waiting. He's getting it as an offer, and I said, yeah. you know, I would still. It's the thing about feature updates versus critical updates. I said, right. always install critical yeah. updates right away. Yeah. Feature yeah. updates, it's, there's no hurry. So take a yeah. few right. weeks. I said, they're better now, aged. Yeah, that's for sure. Think of it this as is cheese. advice. I'm not going to, I can't follow myself, you know, whatever. No, but, but, you, but we're in a different position. And, We've got to use this stuff. But, but I, yes. No, but, but somebody like me like, shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, but increasingly, someone like everyone should be doing it. I mean, I know, really. Yeah. Like Leo just said, there is no reason to install something optional. There's no rush, you know, yeah. immediately. There isn't. And no. unfortunately, you know, if you go back a year, I remember we had this conversation about. I guess it would have been about 1903, which was released and then pulled and then delayed and then finally released. Yeah. Remember, it was like a horrible nightmare yeah. scenario. Yeah. Flash forward a year. You can go back, and then we were talking a few shows back. Oh, yeah, it's going to be great. They tested this thing for 15 years. We, we kept we saying that. I know. Problems, blah, blah, blah. It is we unbelievable did. how this turned out. And I, I'm, I mean, I don't think that's on us exactly. By any account, this should have been a very safe rollout. The way this yeah. has unfolded mm-hmm. has been kind of nightmarish. I mean, it's. Yeah. It's it been surprisingly bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, look, I mean, if you I'm want, not hearing, if, I, although, are you hearing from a lot of people who are affected? Because I'm, maybe they're being uh, blocked from getting it because I'm very thing. few I'm, people I'm, right. are, are pinging me, right? That's exactly right. But, oh, well, I was going to say the other half of that is very few people have ever pinged me and said, hey, I got it. You know, some have. But yeah. this thing is very clearly going out very slowly. So, actually, sometime in the yeah. next week or so, I'm sure I'll hear from Ad Duplex and see what their data shows. But I bet this rollout is the slowest, you know. You do? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I bet this has gone out to almost mm. nobody. Like here, here's another one uh, that came up this morning, and maybe you've already talked about this, or we have sink, a sinking OneDrive and before you install 2004. <laughs> like oh, this oh, guy, the, the, um, you're Jerry Paulus. No, Jerry Paulus on Twitter said to me today, make sure you sync OneDrive on your PC before you install the 2004 update. Because if you do it post-update, you have to sign back in, re-enable OneDrive, and that is just turning into this huge nightmare. (laughs) So there's some syncing issue with OneDrive that he's talking about. And I thought that was in the list of known problems. So I'm going to leave this. Re-signing in is not surprising. No, then he said once you re-sign in, it doesn't sync right. Oh, I get it. That's yeah. the thing. Like, I, by the way, and uh, this is a nightmare. Maybe most people listening to the show could probably overcome fairly easily. But 
I have run into a circumstance where this happens and it kind of, it, it, it's a dicey thing. Like you, you can move your OneDrive folder to like your desktop, which is what I would do after mm -hmm. you sign out re-sign in, yeah. have it resync up, and then you go and select the folders you want to be local and mm -hmm. do it again. And, you know, kind of, you kind of pray to God that it didn't lose anything, right? It yeah. shouldn't. But, you know, again, we're dealing with data here. This is, um, it's a little dicey, you know? And so, yeah, when, mm -hmm. when stuff like this happens to OneDrive, um, you know, you start paying attention, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's when you get religion, right? right? When you lose something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, here's the thing. Uh, John Cable, uh, who I don't know, but he is the, the voice of everything's fine at Microsoft with the way we develop Windows. And so when he appears uh, like, you know, Puxitani Pete or whatever to tell us that everything's great, um, you know, something's gone wrong. <laughs> you know, And so like, the that's one a we particularly have... unfortunate <laughs> reputation, <laughs> you know, comes out of his little hole in Pennsylvania. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, like, for example, so for example, like this week, we. There were two blog posts back to back uh, yesterday or the day before, whenever it was, describing all this stuff about the next version of Windows 10. And, you know, you know, it wasn't in anything. And one of them was by John Cable. And it was about the development process and blah, blah, blah. How, you know, we, we've learned from the past, you know, all that stuff. The one thing he didn't discuss, unless I just missed it because I was more interested in the other stuff and it kind of flew by me. But he usually talks about, like, how's it going? You know, yeah. and Mary Jo and I had this discussion last week, maybe two weeks ago. Um and uh, we'll have it again next week when we see the ad duplex data. They will talk like everything's going great. It's just going completely. Good. This is exactly what we thought was going to happen and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. There's all this stuff going wrong with Windows 2004. Uh, uh, they have never officially addressed any of it in a blog post. Not once. No. And this they is haven't. the guy who would do it, you know. So when you see when I see his name, like I saw his name yesterday, I thought, here we go. What's mm -hmm. he going to say? And he's talking about the next version of Windows. Yeah. They've moved right past yeah. it. Like there's a train crash happening here. I get that you're going to build a bullet, bullet train in the future, but literally right here where we're standing is a train crashed. We should address that. Not yeah. the, right. You Unless know what I'm part of it is? is? No, I, I don't think he addressed it at all. And part of this, if you look at the list of known issues that are still under the quote investigating headline, um, a bunch of these involve third parties, Right. Um, third, like third party uh, drivers, okay. audio drivers, Microsoft is very conscious about not calling people out on this stuff. Publicly. Yeah. It's embarrassing for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm not saying that's a good reason that they haven't done a blog post about this, but, um, I I'm think sorry, that might be part is, of the reason they haven't. <laughs> yeah. It is irresponsible not to address this. That doesn't mean you have to I, call. I agree. I think they should say something. Um, yeah. I, you know, beyond just we're throttling it and using AI to predict which machines should get it and shouldn't. Right. They still should right. address. They should point people in their blog, I think, to the release information page who don't know about it and say, by the way, if you don't have it or you've been blocked from getting it or you're having problems, look at this page over here. They should do that. Yeah. 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 This, right? You know, they put this cute thing in Windows Update. that says, hey, there's a great new Windows update. Uh, Windows coming and you're not getting it. <laughs> like, how about a, a link to why you're not getting it, you know? Right, that, you, that would be that, that would be good. Notification yep. when that thing is fixed. That, right. I mean, what, what are we yeah. using technology here for? Like, this is yeah. this is how this could be updated to keep right. people informed. That in a no, way that a would lot make of, sense. Right, a lot of people you know? who are our listeners and our readers, they when they get blocked, they're like, "So which thing is blocking me?" And they ask us this all the time, right? And I'm like, "I don't know which right. of those." 12 things that are not patched is blocking you. I don't know. <laughs> you could do something goofy like unplug a docking station, recheck Windows Update, and you'd get it. But you'd have yeah. no way to know that. It, right. it, it's, I mean, it knows why you're blocked. <laughs> right? right. I mean, it must. Right. There must I bet be you that's the, third, that's the third party thing that they don't want it to could embarrass. Because be. I bet you nine times out of ten, you're blocked because of some HP or Dell could, driver. Then, or, then you know. send that. Intel, to yeah, to get Intel, the yeah. Uh, listen, yeah. this is the support mm -hmm. chain that needs to happen. If that's what it is, if it's Intel yeah. or HP or whoever, um, then you're 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 turning that person that wants this thing to the in the right direction so they can get it fixed. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if yeah. it's a, you know if it's an HP or Intel driver, both of those companies have their own updating tools, which should be on your computer. Yeah, they have ways to provide feedback to those companies. I mean. Yeah. Use that. Yeah. You don't and anybody listening here, 
if anybody listening to the show, if you want to try to figure it out, do some sleuthing on your own. Just search for Windows 10 release information page. And then you click on the version you want to get and you can see the list of mitigated, investigating and resolved. And you can try to draw your own conclusions from that list. (laughs) (laughs) Although some things aren't on there, like OneDrive is not on there. (laughs) That issue we just talked about. And neither is storage spaces. So (laughs) that should be what Windows support tells you. Draw your own conclusions. (laughs) You're just not getting it. All right. You can guess. You can make guesses about why. You don't have it. <laughs> You're going to have to. Yeah, I don't, I still, like, like people every day are asking me on Twitter, do you have it on Sur- Surface Laptop 3 yet? Nope. And I've seen Surface Book 2 is not getting it from various people. And um, right, yeah, right. the Surface devices still aren't getting it. Well, they don't want the Large. third party uh, Microsoft company to get upset at them. Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> you don't want to embarrass them. <laughs> don't want to embarrass Microsoft. Yeah. So Mary Jo, let me ask you, if you wake up tomorrow and you go onto the internet, like you probably do every morning and you see a story, oh my God. Surface laptop just got 2004. Are you going to knee jerk over to Windows Update and install that thing right then? No, nope. I mean, I am not. Right? No, no. Especially for you, now huh? that these things are coming. Well, I already saw it, so it's saying, I, "We see you oh, want it, now but you've you can't that get you, it." It's like you can't invite a vampire <laughs> in your house, Mary Jo. I know. I was an idiot. The one time I was a seeker. Didn't the one time Salem's I was a seeker. Wife? It's such an easy <laughs> thing to do. Once you let the kid in the house, it's over. <laughs> I know. I, I learned my lesson. I'll never do that again. Here comes Krampus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. Let me in, Johnny. I'm still your friend. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Um, well anyway. You want to talk about Edge and PDFs? This was something we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so... Yeah, the past couple of weeks I've been recommending like PDF apps because the right. PDF support in the new Edge is so broken, right? And um, this is the one area where Legacy Edge is actually a, a better product. It was the, the PDF support was really incredible. And it's really basic stuff like the table content support, which is frankly the one thing I really need because I, you know, as I pub, as I write the book, I test the chapters and they send me a PDF and that's how I do it. And uh, not being able to jump through the book really, you know, quickly is a huge problem. So Microsoft this week, they have, I have to say the Edge team does a pretty good job at this. They published all these roadmaps and uh, they published a roadmap for PDF support and they're fixing a ton of stuff. Um, some of it they've already talked about, the smooth scroll experience, which I think goes back over a year, uh, the table of content support that I want, the ability to highlight uh, text and have it saved to that file, notes, you know, the ability to load uh, protected PDFs, et cetera. So there's a bunch of it. Um, but they also, this is kind of cool, they actually listed the top features that uh, users have requested and they're considering these. And so what they want you to do is provide feedback uh, if you want any of these features. And you can do that from the Microsoft post I linked to in my article, or if you're using Microsoft Edge, just type uh, Alt Shift plus I. That brings up that feedback form, and you can tell them you want one of these features. So, those features are uh, fill PDF forms, Yay. the ability to use ink, right, that on PDFs. Yeah, yeah, yep, which was <laughs> yeah. the old Edge. Um, uh, create highlights to bring attention to different parts of the file. View PDFs in dark mode, meaning like the page would be dark, right? Uh, not white, um, open Microsoft information protection and information right management protected PDF. And actually, I think that one is coming uh, and view permissions. Uh, add accessibility support, including keyboard accessibility, screen reader support, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, read aloud. And read aloud is coming, by the way. Read aloud is in the Canary version of Microsoft Edge. So anyway, um, they're going to, I don't know if that's everything. I'm sure someone out there is like, oh, but what about, you know, maybe some other mm-hmm. arcane feature I've missed. But um, it looks like they're, they're going to eventually do right by PDFs in uh, in the new edge. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and memory usage too. We were talking about this, I think, yeah, before this the show. This just right? happened. This this post is so slow, and it is edge specific. And by the way, Windows, like Leo speculated, he's correct. Uh, Windows specific. So what it says is that in the May, <laughs> in Windows 10 version 2004. God, these guys can't get anything right. <laughs> um, Microsoft is leveraging blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Anyway, the point is memory usage reduction is up to 27% over the previous version. So this is an, you get this just by actually by updating windows in this case. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so this, oh, really? just, that's, that's the interest. I think to me, that was the most interesting thing. Yeah. yeah. It's now. Yeah. Why, just does, why does that happen through windows? Cause Whatever. edge isn't part of windows. Well, it is now release. though, isn't it? No, no, doesn't no not it yet. Is. All between the Edge developers and the Windows developers. No, I don't know. Uh, 
That's it's obviously Great. Windows 10 specific. Yeah. It's yeah, it's interesting, huh? So it's, it's something they did in the OS that reduces memory usage and edge. Yep. Yeah. So there you go. So, so I thought you know I what? saw somewhere that they are going to start that's putting started. Edge into the Windows. They are. There. But that's 20H2. That's 20H2. 20H2. Okay. Yep. 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 So yep. Oh, yeah. We didn't too, even mention you? that, did we? <laughs> we forgot to say that. Excited. Yeah, I saw it somewhere, it, not Cridge, here. <laughs> yeah, Credge is going to be in 20H2. Yeah. Like we kept yes. wondering when it would that's be included. That's good news. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah. Yep. As it should be. And I think that's an appropriate yeah. kind of length of time to wait. Make sure everything's good before you force it on everybody. They'll still put IE in or not? Have they stopped doing that? They're not going to put uh, IE in 20H2, so right? So it's finally, really, it's finally out there. Pretty sure they're not. Because they have IE compatibility mode in Right, Cridge, they don't right? need it anymore, yeah. Which, by the well, way, just that means actually will be an interesting thing. they put an IE, they just didn't put the icon in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, still, it's in the operating system. Well, you know. going back to the antitrust trail, as we yes. know. Yeah. It is part of the operating the system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good compatibility. <laughs> it's pretty much the same. Yeah. It's almost like it's exactly the same. But yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I see the pause. That means I'm supposed to say. And now, a few more project reunion details are available on GitHub. Yeah. Never ask. I, I feel this like this, good. this snuck up on me because we're watching the, uh, the presentations. We're watching Satya Sat Nadella's yeah. keynote. At build, and he just throw kind of mentions this, and I and I mm -hmm. know you talked about it a little bit, Mary Jo, but we it, did. It kind of suddenly floated to the top in, in a big way. Yeah, yeah, right. because you know a year ago when we were at build, they started talking about this without giving it the project reunion code name, right? So they were saying, you know what, we want to just have a world where it's just Windows apps and not UWP apps and Win32 apps, but they didn't really say how are we going to get there, right? And then this year at build. They came up with this thing called Project Reunion, which is a whole set of libraries and components, which they are hoping Windows developers of all stripes will adopt and put into their applications. So you don't have to do it, but they're kind of saying it would be good if you did this. And they told us a couple of the first pieces were WinUI 3 and WebView 2. That's what they said at Build. But yep. um, they just announced that there's a whole bunch of other things, too, that are in this. Um, that we didn't hear about at Build. And they've also got a list of things that are coming soon to Project Reunion. So um, modern lifecycle helpers um, for power, making your app power sensitive, startup tasks to make your app come alive when people log in, um, <laughs> update you, scan you integration. <laughs> I know, <laughs> update scan integration. Alive. I know, I'm, I'm reading their okay, words, sorry. obviously. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. No, I know. Um, yeah, I, I, those aren't my words, um, <laughs> surprisingly. Access to user resources from the app container. Like there's a whole bunch of things. If you go to the GitHub for Project Reunion that have been added, um, and they also have a very nice list of things, what, what Project Reunion is and is not. Because when you see people write about this or talk about it, you can tell people aren't quite sure what it is still. And so they've got a whole thing like Project Reunion is not a new app model. It's not a new platform from Windows. You know, it's right. not a Windows SDK. <laughs> it's like all these things. Here's what it is not, right? And um, well, they, I think it's good that they're explaining it a little more because I felt it built, they gave us kind of a bare bones explanation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. In, in using this, like in Visual Studio, what I can say yeah. is that you can create new projects that are, they don't call them, they call them WinUI apps in this case, um, yeah. that are either desktop or UWP based. And, uh, I mean, they look a lot like UWP, frankly, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. as far as yeah. uh, the developer experience. Um, it's not, mm -hmm. it, it's an evolution, I would say, not something new. Um, yeah. But as we discussed in the past, I still think the biggest use for uh, WinUI slash Project Reunion is adding modern capabilities to existing apps. And that's right. existing apps that go all the way back to the, almost 20 years ago, in the beginning of .NET and WinForms, mm -hmm. uh, all the way through UWP. Yep. So. If you have um, an, an app running on any of those frameworks and W, yeah, all uh, when you, uh, I'm sorry, uh, WinForms, WPF, or UWP, the UX stuff will be evolved going forward in WinUI, which is mm -hmm. part of Project Reunion. Yeah. And if you can add that stuff to your existing apps, no, no matter how you built it. And actually, I should yeah. say C++ too. 
um, and actually, and going forward, not so much for new app, uh, for existing apps, for new apps, if you want to use uh, React Native as well. So, mm. yeah, I, I think the interesting thing about Project Reunion is where it goes next, uh, because right. like you said, there were two parts of it announced to build. You listed a few other things, none of which were super compelling to me, but whatever. And no yeah. doubt other things that were previously part of UWP will be stripped out and made available to mm -hmm. everyone as part of Project Reunion. And I'm curious yeah. still to see what those things will be. But yeah, I, but yeah. we just talked about this. I mean, there yeah. is no one way forward for Windows developers in the future. The way the ways forward are legion and you can choose whichever direction you want yeah. to go. Uh, if you yeah. have a, an app you've been working on for 15 years in WPF, you can bring it forward. Mm -hmm. Oh, they added two more things that are on the list of there now that weren't there. Mm -hmm. So the Rust Windows runtime library is listed as part of Project Reunion now. Interesting. And yeah. MSIX Core, the packaging format, okay. right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is now part of it too, yes. which makes sense. This I might because that be that was the missing piece, right? Remember, we were like, right. you know, there's parts of this right. that are missing. Like, how do you get the apps? Like, if you don't have to well, use the store, yeah, like, how so do you do it, right? <laughs> the pack the packaging isn't so much how you get the apps as how you package them so you can deliver the apps, but there's right, that, that piece is still sort of missing. But yeah, um, um, Winget, the store, I right. think these are the mm -hmm. where this is going for the future. But I mm -hmm. think, and this is, I haven't looked at this thing weeks now, so I could be wrong. But I believe when you start a WinUI solution in Visual Studio, you get the app project as well as an MSIX packaging mm -hmm. project. Because mm -hmm. one of the things, frankly, that's been missing for a while now in Windows development is that packaging bit, you know, mm -hmm. like when I deploy like a WinForm app, it's really limited, you know? Yeah. Uh, and you, I guess you'd expect that it's kind of an old thing, but um, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to, well, it's like a, you have to use a third party solution today, basically to package your app so you can mm -hmm. deliver it to the people. So, or to, you know, to users. So Microsoft is providing that as part of the experience now. That's good. I'm I'm excited. I can't wait to see more. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to. I what I really want to see is like so. The first, you know, whatever it is, beta, whatever version, which runs on a beta version of Visual Studio, is not complete. It doesn't have everything. I mean, I, yeah, I want to. I can't wait for the next one and the next. I want to see how this goes. You know, over time. Mm. Yep. 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 Um, yep. 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 Okay. Parallels mm -hmm. is partnering. With Google, <laughs> Do, is this something I should care about? No, okay. but we'll talk about it <laughs> later. Regardless, go ahead. Later, I guess. I guess I will. So, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> we can like, do so, this later if you want. Yeah. So, parallels, uh, uh, parallels, which is now part of Corel, right? So, I hear from these guys. Mm -hmm. They sent me this little. It wasn't even announced. It was just an email. Hey, we're doing this thing. It's basically that sentence you can see there in the notes. And I'm like, okay, um, is there a, a blog post or something? I don't see it on your site, yeah. you know. And like, no, <laughs> uh, nothing yet. It's it's not going to happen until the end of the year. But uh, Google has this post, and they linked me to that. And this is like a huge post, and there's a tiny paragraph near the bottom. And basically, what's happening? It's well, we have to say basically because we don't know for sure. But Parallels has um, remote deployment and virtualization solutions for delivering Windows apps in businesses. And I think that's what they're going to do for Chromebook. It's only Chromebook for Chromebook oh. Enterprise. Oh, right? mm. okay. I for like now. this yeah. idea. I've used Parallels on the Mac. It's yeah. it's a nice so emulator. I, it's basically the same as VMware. Yeah, but I, I don't think you're going to be running the apps on your computer. I think this is literally oh, like a, a desktop virtualization, oh. you know, third party. There's two reasons this is interesting. One is they're partnering with Google. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to be the official partner. And maybe they'll partner with Citrix. Maybe they partner with Microsoft even. Who knows? But anyway, they're the first, if not the only. The other thing to me is kind of cool is like um, parallels when they describe this. They're like, yeah, this is like a way to bring your full featured, you know, awesome Windows apps and bring them to the Chrome devices because your business is, you know, they don't say it this way, but, you know, business is basically forcing you to use a Chrome device. And then you look at the Google description, they're like, yeah, it's just a way to bring legacy apps to the Chrome. <laughs> like, We're know, not really fans of them, it, but. Doesn't it bring bring the apps to your Chromebook locally, though? Like, it, it, no one, are you no, running so it say, virtually? 
I think you're right. No, I don't think that's I think it's local. They're server side or they're local? So, you do. So Parallels I, is local on the Mac. It, it's I think a, it's, it's local. a virtualization solution. No, no, I, I, I really don't think it is. So you I don't? could be wrong. But if it would be much better to, if Paul's right because the Chromebooks are not much horsepower, yeah, yeah. not much RAM. Right, not you don't want to do it that yeah. way. No, right? I don't believe you're going to be running a Windows VM. So I, I could be I could be wrong, but Parallels is not just that thing. Like Leo's describing the um, desktop version of Parallels, which runs on the Mac. Unless you run yeah. a virtual machine, you can interoperate between Windows apps and Mac apps on the Mac desktop. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but the, if you look at their site and see what else they offer, they have a lot of stuff. And if you look at their business offerings in particular, some of the stuff they have is um, basically remote app delivery, uh, streaming apps basically to the desktop. So it's, you know, Windows virtual desktop or what Citrix yeah. does, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. My guess is it's that kind of thing. But I, we have to guess. Yeah. Because literally neither company is saying. But it's not coming until, I don't know if they said the month, but the end of this year sometime. November, mm -hmm. I think. Why are they? Why is it enterprise only? You think it may be something with licensing or? No, I think That's the enterprise. That's my guess, right? Well, my, so. You would have to have an office yeah. license, yes. Right, I would do. think. So <laughs> this is why I Sorry. think it's a remote <laughs> solution. No, it's okay. Not a virtualization solution. This is not for a yeah. user to install Windows in their Chromebook. It is a way for a business user in a managed environment to remotely deliver, get re apps remotely delivered from a, from the cloud to their ma managed mm -hmm. Chromebook. Mm -hmm. So this so is the light use for the, at the business level. I'm really confused too. <laughs> well, let's up. So Parallels is a company. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, so the reason this there is would be a is business is, market, you know, I think, in the enterprise, if I could buy my employees. Chromebooks instead of, you know, ThinkPads, and then they could just log into a server. Now, I don't know if it's our server on prem, if it's where no, that it server is. The, well, oh, by, so I'm oh, sorry, I should say we have to speculate here, right? Because this is really vague. It's not clear. What if right. this is coming from the Google Cloud? And that's the point of this partnership that they're bringing It's like parallels. Stadia for productivity tools. That's exactly. I am. Right. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess mm -hmm. you could. So but the, you wouldn't need a license. Way, like, Yes, but at the business level. So a a business has yeah. said, look, we want to switch to Chromebooks for some class of our users or all of our users, doesn't matter, because these things are less expensive to use and maintain and purchase. They're, right. um, we mostly use web apps, but as is always the case, there's this one app, uh, a line of business app from the past or whatever it is, or some small number of apps that run only on Windows. We need some way to get them to the Chromebook. So mm -hmm. there are remote desktop solutions, remote app solutions. This is one of them. They're partnering yeah. with Google, which is why this gets interesting. That's why I think it's a remote solution. I don't. Yeah. I, I cannot yeah. imagine. I think you're right. The more I'm looking at the, this, I think you're right. Yeah. We have to guess. Yeah. I mean, because Google's talking about cloud workers, right, in that blog post. Okay. okay. So, Yo, you, oh, you actually read the, the actual blog post. So you did more work than I just I looked but at yeah. it. I just looked at it. I, yeah, I was like, oh, cloud workers. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that is weird and interesting. So someone in the chat room is saying mm -hmm. that according to the Verge article, it's going to be running locally. Let me see. I'm okay. looking for the Verge article right now. See if I can find it. Mm -hmm. Well, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, they made it. As something called remote application server, which is the right. leading solution for virtual application desktop delivery. It provides Windows applications to anyone using any OS or mobile device. This, my guess is that's what this is. Yeah, that would so make sense. I think the confusion, I, you know why, yes, you know why the Virgin, some people are confused. Uh, when they talked about it, Corel slash Parallel said, we can bring full featured Windows applications to Chrome. And so some mm -hmm. people just mean, oh, so that means Office running locally, right? Like that's what they think when they hear that. I think they're jumping to a conclusion. Look, this is Tom Warren writing in The Verge. Yeah, yeah. I, I suspected yeah. it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yep. thought it might be. Parallels mm -hmm. desktop will be integrated natively into Chrome OS, mm -hmm. improving okay. performance and enabling offline access for these applications in Chromebooks. Offline access. Okay. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Okay, that'll be interesting to see if how that works and if I, it works, I, right? I, I don't care how they do it. I'm just saying, you know, yeah. based on what I understand about these companies and what I understand about yeah. Chromebooks, this is what yeah. my guess. Right. I just, I try to be clear when I'm speculating. Um, 
I, yeah. if this is a, a literal on disk solution, it's going to require some pretty decent hardware. So it's going to be that's why it's enterprise built. only. Maybe yeah. that's really the reason is you have to have yeah. a thousand. And by the way, Chromebook. you know, Chromebooks, a lot of Chromebooks, well, you especially can do it. in the business space, yeah. they're not bad. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, Five but they're mostly, seven. you know, at best, Atom processors. Uh, oh. Sometimes they're i fives, but mostly they're Atoms or less. No, but the point is, you can get those machines, and you get eight, sixteen gigs of RAM. You know, storage yeah. is usually the problem. Storage, mm -hmm. not just the size, but the, uh, you know, speed. the speed. You still see yeah. the EM and a lot. Um, yeah. But anyway, the point is, you can get a good Chromebook, so it, it's possible. This is very mm -hmm. uh, unclear. I, and, you yeah, know, it's weird they announced it now, too. Like, why well, they now? They say planned fall release. Yeah, so why? Yeah, so yeah. Why, why did they announce yeah. it ahead of, like, WWDC? Like, what are they trying to do? What, what was the timing all about, you know? It was weird. <laughs> I, I, well, so, I, I, look, I don't cover Google the same way that I do Microsoft, obviously. Right. But the one thing I have been sort of privy to is that Google was caught a little flat-footed by this work-from-home stuff, and they've been kind of scrambling mm. to get stuff out there. Mm. That's why you can get Meet and mm -hmm. Gmail, which is hilarious. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, but they're, I think they're scrambling to kind of catch up. And I, I think yeah, maybe. Yeah. I didn't look at the whole blog post, but I, that blog post that you're, we were both referencing mm -hmm. probably tied to some, hey, remember us, work from home. You can work from home on a Chromebook. Remember oh, they work offline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's probably tied mm -hmm. to that. Yeah, offline would be I'm sure Google, part of this. Google probably went to them, and they, they've been working on this, right? So Google yeah. might have come to them and said, look, we, we want to mention that we're going to be doing this thing with you. And they were mm -hmm. like, yeah, okay. So they felt the need to mm -hmm. prompt people like me. Well, running low, mm -hmm. by the way, is a terrible idea. But I, So I remember OnLive offered Windows licenses, server right. licenses. Got in big trouble. And got in big yep. trouble with Microsoft. <laughs> well, that's the licensing issue, right? It, yeah, so. but can anybody do yeah. that now? Can you do that now? I mean, if Stadia can play... You know, um, uh, Far Cry. Uh, so I think the, the licensing issue would probably be uh, maybe you do it indirectly, but the the business would still yeah the business would on the license be yeah they have the, for the license yeah yeah yeah. It'd be kind of interesting, yeah. uh, and I think you know this is the thin client thing back again, but I think right. it's an interesting way to make the hardware, the local hardware, inexpensive and and yeah do the yeah. work server and, side. And yeah. that, that's one of the many reasons I thought that I assume this still assume this is a remote thing, but um, yeah, we'll see. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it is kind of uh, vague. <laughs> so shall Very we say? Vague. It's no, it's Very incredibly vague. vague. Yeah, even, even <laughs> it is parallels. I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> what does this say? And I'm like, you must have yeah. more information somewhere. Nope. Okay. All right. No. You guys buried the lead. Microsoft money is back. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> wow. Kind of. Micro so back in the day when you first bought your first personal computer, whether it be uh -huh. a Commodore 64 or a Trash 80, the first thing you wanted to do is balance your checkbook. Right. And Microsoft. <laughs> That's and where the computer was. That, right. And Microsoft mm -hmm. and Intuit were in a pitched battle. Microsoft money mm -hmm. versus Quicken. Well, mm -hmm. it wasn't that pitched of a battle because Microsoft was going to buy into it. <laughs> And then, oh right! I totally forgot that. Denied That's good. by the, uh, I think it was, I don't, not the DOJ, the uh, F. No, maybe it was the DOJ. FTC? Was that before Somebody Microsoft money it. or after? Did money come as a result of that? No, money existed. They were going to buy into it to get uh, Quicken. Yeah. That yeah. they were blocked. That's right. Yeah, right. Because and probably because money existed. Yeah, and that yeah, and then, yeah, you know, yeah. They Microsoft to dominate the market. Um, it was right. right at the beginning of their antitrust, probably early mm -hmm. '90s, and then they they pushed ahead with uh, money lasted into the 2000s. I mean, it was right. around for a mm -hmm. while. Yeah. Then it gave yep. up to it, Quicken. And then Quicken gave yep. up to the fact that, well, frankly, nobody has a checkbook anymore. <laughs> so exactly. you, you don't need it. Like, <laughs> well, now we have, there are services like, uh, like Mint. Mint. And, yeah. There's a ton of uh, services yeah. that do this without right. all kinds of, yeah. The downloading your yeah, checking statement to, and all that. Right, to, what do you call this? Financial management. I mean, is what happened everywhere else. Mm -hmm. too. Right. It went yep. to right. the cloud. Uh, it went, went service. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what so is this, this money? This thing, <laughs> what is this money thing? It's, it's called money in Excel and it's a template, right? It's an add-in for Excel. And it, what it does is it lets you do your budget tracking um, in Excel. It, if you agree to use this, um, you go through a third-party plugin from a company called Plaid and they connect to more than 10,000 yes. institutions in the U.S., retail banks, um, credit unions and everything. And... Excuse me. They will help you import your 
and connect connect to your uh, like your bank account and yeah. other accounts. Plaid you is have. a service. And They've then, done this forever for uh, companies yeah. like Intuit for like Mint. It's right. a back end. It's the banks use it, and so that way they have your credentials, and so exactly. it can be. A, it's a connector to your bank account. Yes, that makes sense. Right, and your credit card. So the so. only way you can get this is if you subscribe to Microsoft 365 Family or Personal those new consumer plans that Microsoft announced at the end of March. There's a 30 day free trial of these plans. Boy, that's um, kind of tempting. I could go back yeah. to balancing my checkbook with a spreadsheet. <laughs> you could. I used to do it. Yeah. I used to do it in VisiCalc. <laughs> yeah. Right. You could do it. So if, before you do this, I would advise you, I linked in my post to this, uh, look at the frequently asked questions page. You can see like the privacy terms for Plaid and you can see exactly what, how this uses your information and all. And because I've gotten e emails from some people who say, I'm not using this thing. I'm like, you don't have to. It's an optional feature. Right. You don't have to and use Plaid it. And right? Plaid almost certainly already <laughs> has all that information because it's used as a backup yeah. by banks and other things. So yeah. the, it's yeah. not like you're giving them something they don't already know. So right. Yeah, right. I, I, I don't have a problem with Although that. Although I did start getting yeah. ads for Rolexes as soon as I signed up. Paul Therod is a high earner. <laughs> <laughs> you make a lot more money than you <laughs> talk about, my friend. Um, you don't dress like it, but, you know, many billion. <laughs> Days don't. Yep. <laughs> so you can get this on the Mac or on Windows, right? Like you can run it in either place. Um, and there's also a snapshot feature. So if you if you're somebody who likes to track your spending habits and have it alert you if something goes up um, in an alarming and strange way, you can you can set that so it'll send you a little ping. Um, so yeah, you know it's what? for people who like to do things this way. It's useful. Who are those people? You know, I, mean, I, know. I, just, I get calls every <laughs> radio show. Um, Do you? Yeah. yeah. So now that Intuit so. doesn't work on 64-bit, uh, <laughs> what can I use? I well, like you can send it to money and service. I tell them about <laughs> Mint or personal capital. or I mean, there are a lot yeah. of ways to do this. Yeah. I think our... We use one of those, uh, like an e-bank, and they have a they service do it. built in. Yeah, most banks. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. The whole the premise know. of it was, what if the bank makes a mistake? You've got to check up on them. <laughs> I think we've now uh, learned that's, you know. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk to the accountant, please. I see a, a <laughs> yeah, <yes>. comma. <laughs> uh, but I, th I really think that was the point because... Uh, well, I don't know. When when you write a lot of checks, you do have to keep a check register, keep track of, yeah. of what checks are outstanding and what haven't been cashed and all that. But now that people don't really do checks anymore, I don't... Right, oh, just look at it <laughs> you know? Yeah. All your electronic right. transactions are virtually instant, so your balance yeah. reflects them pretty accurately. Yep. Yeah. I, you need some way, whether it's just literally you're looking at your bank account or some kind of a aggregation service like this where you're monitoring what's happening electronically on some schedule because right. invariably there will be some form of fraud, whatever it is, right. a gas station in New York that's suddenly using right. your account to pump gas or whatever it is. Um, no, yeah, it's a good need, thing to but, keep an eye on it for sure. Yeah, yeah, however you do it. I mean, this is one way, but... There are lots of ways. Have you, Plus, they when's have the last time? To office. When's the last time you guys wrote a check? Oh my god! Um, I, so I, I do write checks Monday. <laughs> occasionally, the bodega still do, takes it, checks from you, huh? Yeah, it hurts my hand. <laughs> for a check. It no, hurts my, my mom hand. makes me write yep. her a check. Um, she d won't let me transfer money Aww. to her electronically. Yeah, thank goodness my mother will. <laughs> um. Yeah, because your hand feels so <laughs> strange you when you're writing. Your parents, you realize you've been out of the house for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is really good. Not only do I pay my parents, I pay my kids. I got it going on both ends. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> nice. awesome, right? <laughs> uh, oh, no, it's, I'm happy it's to do it. I, that's you know, I, you got to. I always, I always remember that my mom put up with me when I was one or two. So yeah, sure. it's an appropriate thing to do. Or if fifteen, you can do it. or, or fifteen, 16. right? Teenager <laughs> years, anybody? So it's a nice, mm. it's a nice thing to do. Uh, I think let's say the last. You know who I do still write checks for? Sometimes when people come to the house to do things, like the gutter guys clean the gutters, mm. and I had to write them a check, stuff like that. That's about the only time I ever write checks now. Mm. <sighs> All right. Um, live presentation. This is the office section i'm sorry it yeah the microsoft yeah. 365 section thank you leo for being up to date on the lingo <laughs> so i i don't i didn't recall them announcing this this wasn't part of those march uh announcements but 
in PowerPoint on the web, right, not Windows or Mac, interestingly, although I assume this is coming, there's a new feature called Live Presentation. Um, that actually would be good in a work situation, of course, but also in a school situation, and I would say now like a work-from-home, school-from-home situation. But it's basically a way from within PowerPoint to interact with the audience so people can kind of check in virtually. You can give them a bar – you can email barcodes for them to scan to get in. And uh, they can give you feedback during the presentation. You can allow them to go back and forth through the presentation as you're giving it. If they want to see what's coming up or if they missed something in the past, they can um, also fill out a form using, my, uh, I think it's called Microsoft Forums, I guess, uh, after it's over to provide feedback about the presentation, you know, how well you did, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of just like an interaction kind of a thing. And it is, I think, available today and hopefully will be coming to desktop versions soon. Good. Yes, good. Uh, Microsoft Launcher 6. Uh, is that an Android thing? So the current, like, uh, we'll call it stable version of Microsoft Launcher is 5 point something, 5 point X, we don't know. I don't know. Um, but back in January, March, whenever it was, they released a preview version, which will be the next major version of Launcher, which we now know will be called Launcher 6. Uh, widely expected to be a peek at the uh, the UI we're going to see in Surface Duo. Uh, that's now available in beta. So you can, it, as a launcher user, you can go into settings in the app and get on the beta and use this instead if you want to try it. Um, when this was first available as a preview, didn't necessarily recommend that because it, it wasn't feature complete at all. So it lost a lot of stuff that was in 5X. But it also was really raw and just wasn't quite there yet. Um, but apparently now that it's in beta, it's a lot safer to try. So if you're curious to see what the future looks like from Microsoft's, um, you know, Android UX uh, perspective, this is something to take a look at. Hey, speaking of which, um, I didn't put this in the notes, but um, I don't know if you saw this today, but uh, Google made a Flutter announcement today. And there really wasn't mm -hmm. much of an announcement to it. It was like, you know, we know that uh, Flutter, I should say, is uh, Google's cross-platform um, UX framework, originally for mobile. So Android and iOS, you create one app, runs on both platforms. Uh, over a year ago, they announced they wanted to bring it to the web and to the desktop. Since then, there have been, I don't know, preview versions of Flutter that support those environments. And that includes Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And they basically want this thing to be a UX platform for anything that has a screen, right? Over time, it'll be smart displays, whatever, watches, everything else. But I'm really interested in the desktop bit because, as you guys know, I've been working on these apps and going through different frameworks and trying different things. And um, they were talking about some of the progress they were making uh, toward getting this to work in, in, well, on the desktop, but in Windows in particular. And they actually, <laughs> in the post, make a public outreach to Microsoft saying, hey, you guys have <laughs> Surface devices that run on Windows and Android. You could probably use Flutter. And we would really like to talk to you about this because I think they're looking for some technical help to get uh, Flutter to work with UWP and with uh, Win32. And they they kind of, not kind of, they literally, Tim uh, Sneath, right, former Microsoft, yeah. running <laughs> Flutter, reached out to Microsoft publicly and said, hey, Let's uh, <laughs> let's work on this together. Microsoft, as we know, in addition to the Project Reunion stuff we were just talking about, has a future version of what's now called Xamarin Forums called .NET MAUI, which will kind of do what Flutter does, but within the .NET world in the future, right? It will allow you to create an app that will run on Windows, the Mac, Android and iOS, and I, I, but I don't think the web and I don't think Linux. And if you're a UWP guy or uh, even a WPF guy or WinForm guy, this will be like a familiar .NET style environment. But I got to tell you, using Xamarin Forms, there's a reason I've, I've been taking an online class for Flutter the past couple of weeks. Uh, Xamarin Forms is kind of the reason. It's not. It's it's rough, and Flutter is awesome. Like, yeah, Flutter works great. Cool. People are excited about Flutter. Yeah, so uh, it's it's super different from the XAML stuff. Because it's YAML, not XAML. And actually, that completely. Oh, you're doing things, YAML. Oh, that's why you were talking about YAML. <laughs> yeah, oh. YAML is uh, used for um, configuration it, files. The yeah, the re resource. Yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So, and by God, like the formatting has got to be exact, which is, by the way, really un unsophisticated. That's the one part of it that's kind of weird. But you need a good uh, YAML editor. Yeah, for sure. Um, but anyway, I, I, the interesting thing, and the reason I bring this up is not to talk about <laughs> Flutter per se, but. <laughs> Rather than that Flutter slash Google just reached out to Microsoft publicly. 
um, to see if they might want to work on this. And nice. I got to say, I, I think this would be a better option for them, hmm. you know, for Microsoft. And I mean that from in two ways. For Microsoft to use it for their own apps because, you know, cross-platform, that's what they want. And you would have native apps, right, on different platforms. But also for Microsoft to offer it to their own developers. If you think about how Microsoft has worked with Google on Chromium, um, you could make a case that they could build on top of Flutter and be the guys that work on the Windows-specific stuff to make sure Flutter is a first-class citizen on Windows. You know, It's a long shot, but... Interesting. Kind of it. Yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah. So you're taking a class. Where, where's the class from, the Flutter class? So it's uh, Google offers. It, I'm taking the free version, which is something Google promoted, you know, a month or two ago. Yeah, and it's through a place called App Brewery. So if you go to appbrewery.co, uh, I don't know what else they offer, but it's uh, it's through there. You think we'll have a uh, Paul's notepad for iOS and Android <laughs> anytime soon? Yeah, I think that I... I will make a version of that app f with Flutter for different environments. I'm probably going to – that cocktail app I was working on more recently, I think I'm going to move to Flutter. Ah. Yeah, that's the reason. I, I want to play with this. Can, yeah. can you code in Lisp with Flutter? No. <laughs> so <laughs> the language is – It's Dart. And it's all Dart. Dart is a, yeah. another C-like language. Yeah. But uh, don't be confused by that because it's not as familiar as it sounds. Honestly – the syntax for this is is very strange because it's everything is a widget in Flutter, and there is a it is an incredible kind of cascading embedded code. It's the the coding style is very interesting, um, and that's what I mean. It, it's not like the .NET stuff, which to me is very logical and and harkens back to stuff I did twenty years ago. I mean, I kind of I'm familiar with it. Like this is is it's unfamiliar. Modern. This is called modern, yeah. Paul. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> weird. It makes me uncomfortable. It sounds like everything's a widget in Flutter. Sounds like a Rodgers and Hammerstein song. <laughs> everything's a widget in Flutter. <laughs> everything's a widget in Flutter. It's like um, a hat and a cane. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep. laughs> no, I want to play with this. I'm going to write that down because I, re I, re I really want to yeah. play with this. That sounds really cool. Yeah. But you could, I mean, uh, every place, like Udemy, Udacity, yeah, yeah. Uh, every, oh, no, everybody's there doing are, it. Yeah. There book camps everywhere. Yeah. But you got to do Flutter Dart. Yeah. I've been kind of avoiding Dart, but this would be a good reason to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of commas. Get used to, you know, you get used to semicolons and C-like languages. <laughs> this one is commas. Commas everywhere. Huh. Yep. Comma is how the parser can auto uh, format your code to be, you know, have that kind oh, of hierarchy. So the, it's a delimiter. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. I think Dart, though, is functional. Uh, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I think it doesn't like uh, mutable stuff. I don't I mean, who does? Play with nobody. I don't. <laughs> Certainly. Oh, I see. <laughs> Paint your UI to life. No, there we go. Just like those, the auto run thing. In yeah, there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hot reload. Bring your applications to life. Oh, yeah. do hot, oh, by the way, hot, uh, you know, hot uh, reload is awesome. Yeah, hot reload is awesome. And and the, the way they do it on in Flutter is literally like you control S and the thing yeah. is running in an emulator. And it's like Boom. instant. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's basically, yeah. That's, by the way, that's a Lisp feature. And by the way, because I know there are Visual Studio guys listening. Yes, yes, I know. It does it too. It does hot reload. Something like that. Yeah. This is way better. That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's true hot reload. Yeah, yeah. No, they, I mean we have it. It's you know it's in the Windows world too. But it's this is this is uh, hot hot reload and also hot restart. But hot reload. Done well, the right. the, the really way nice. you really want it is that you want to be able to debug into a running application so you can see what, what symbols are and stuff like that. I doubt VB does that. <sighs> Um, All right, guys. This is in programming <laughs> weekly. Gong. Let's get to the uh, Xbox gong. news. Gong. I was trying to wow, save you. Wow, did I really just say that? Words <laughs> Joe has never said in her life. All right. We're in a new world, guys. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Paul. Xbox news. Because she insists. Because Perry Joe uh, jo wants it. I do. Uh, if you're an Xbox One user, the June 2020 update is now available. You should get it automatically. Um, the only big thing here to me is that they're basically putting badges on stuff. And this is better than it sounds. So if you're a, um, 
uh, an Xbox Game Pass subscriber especially, but also Xbox Live Gold or an EA Access sub subscriber, um, as you see games in the UI, wherever they are, in the store, in the dashboard, whatever, it will have a little badge that says Game Pass or whatever the thing is. And if you are a Game Pass user, they're also reorganizing the, you know, learn more stuff so that games that are in the Game Pass are the first thing that you see because obviously that's the point of the subscription. Beyond that, uh, let's see what else is in here. Uh, same, they're doing this in the game library as well. So you're looking at the library of your games. You can tell where they come from, et cetera. And that's most of it. There isn't too much in there. But um, anyway, it's out. So there's there's that. And then what is the other thing? Oh, smart delivery. So this is one of those features that's like almost semi-obvious. But one of the things that they're promising is that, you know, my, the big story for Xbox Series X is the big story for Xbox, which is backward compatibility. And that when you move forward, everything gets better. So one of the promises with the Xbox One, which is one of the promises with Xbox Series X, is you have these games and you move forward to the new console and they always get better in some way. And sometimes that better just means they load faster, the um, the loading screens go by faster, you know, the frame rate goes up. In some cases with Xbox Series X, even games dating back to the original Xbox console will have better graphics, will even have HDR capabilities, et cetera. So they're using a functionality or a feature called Smart Delivery to make sure that when you buy a, let's say you buy an Xbox One game, that game is available in a specific version for Xbox Series X, when you play that game on the console, you're going to get that version. So you're always going to get the best possible experience. So in other words, it, it you don't have to go buy it again. You know, it's not like you're going from like 8-track to CD or something. Like if you bought the game and there is a version, well, let's say you buy a game and there isn't a new version, it will be, you know, better, right? Because all games are better. Um, it may be optimized for Xbox Series X, in which case... Uh, like Halo Infinite when it comes out will probably, I shouldn't say that actually because Halo Infinite might not be on Xbox One, but let's pick a game that is on Xbox One like Destiny 2 uh, will be optimized for Xbox Series X. You play it on Xbox One, it looks great. You play it on Xbox Series X, you get a completely different experience. Like it's going to be way nicer because it's specifically being tailored for that console. So they're just ensuring that you'll always have the best possible experience. I should have just said that because that's really all this is. Um, <laughs> so there you go. So, Mary Jo, when you're playing Halo on the Xbox Series X, it's going to look great. I'm really happy to hear that. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> I might buy a PS5 instead. Ooh. Damn it. <laughs> oh. It's pretty cool looking. It looks weird, doesn't it? I like how it looks. I think it looks you like do? a flower vase. Yeah. <sighs> looks like a cool flower vase. What's wrong with that? It just looks strange. Although like a, I think all these gaming top. consoles look strange. It but. looks like <laughs> an alien artifact, and that's what I want in my living room. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'll be waiting until I can tell you what I want. It's the I know. slab from 2001: A Space Odyssey, and oh, I'm getting it. Oh, 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 oh. So you're getting a Series X, huh? Of course oh, yeah. you are. Sure, of course you are. What else am I gonna get? I don't know. I'm really the, uh, the like the new Unreal Engine. Um, yeah, but that's on, that's on Xbox Series. X. Is it okay? Yeah, it's not a PS exclusive. <laughs> okay, you didn't buy the Sony marketing, did you, Leo? Yeah, I did. <laughs> he got in. He's apparently, all in. Apparently, I did. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Hmm. No, look. I honestly, I think both of these things are going to be awesome. The graphics going to be incredible. I think the case you can make for PlayStation is obviously the same case we've always made, which is they have platform exclusives yeah, that people exclusives. really like. Yeah. And, yeah, that will be a thing. I'm not but, you know, all the, that tied into games. I want the best engine. So if whichever has that, I think both, I think both are they look both look pretty comparable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's take a break, and then the back of the book is next. Paul Thorat, Thorat.com, Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com. Our show today brought to you from the beautiful LastPass Studios. We are LastPass fanatics here at uh, Twit. We I used it since it came out, which is more than a decade ago, I feel like. A long time. It's always been my default password manager. First thing I install on any new device, whether it's Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, every browser I use has a LastPass plugin because that's the easiest way for me to log into websites, easiest way for me to authorize apps. And it's getting easier all the time. And one of the reasons we use LastPass in business is... It's important for your employees to have the same good password hygiene you do at home. 
you know, I know if you're listening to this show, I'm sure you don't reuse passwords. Your passwords are true, long, strong, random numbers, letters, special characters. You're not using your mother's maiden name and your birthday, are you? I certainly hope not. LastPass makes it easy to use good, long, truly random passwords because it remembers the password for you. All you have to remember is one master password. But the employee, the average employee, I, you know, I don't blame them. They don't know. They reuse passwords. They, worse, they'll put them on a post-it note because they can't remember it. And they'll put it on the screen. Uh, you know, for anybody to come along and borrow it, they'll share it. Most employees, I just saw a study, said more than the half of all employees share their passwords with people, many of them not at work, just randomly. Uh, your employees have the keys to the kingdom. They have the bank accounts. They have the databases. They have the servers. They have your customer information. You want to make sure that they're doing passwords right, and that's what LastPass does. If you're sending employees home to work from home, you really need LastPass. And the nice thing is, even if you didn't set up LastPass before the quarantine, it's never too late. It's always important to have a plan for the unexpected, and LastPass can be deployed instantly in the midst of any event to ensure your business keeps running smoothly. Every employee login is secure. They're also moving beyond the password, things like single sign-on apps, because these allow you to... Oh, Microsoft uses this. You open a page and the Microsoft app says yes or no, is that you? Google uses it. Now there are more than 1,200 apps, and they use LastPass as the authenticator. So, so LastPass says, is, it, is this the app? Yes. Is this you? Yes. Amazingly, as easy as this is, as fast as it is, it's actually more secure. And it's because there's a centralized view, IT always has insight into who has access to what, where they're accessing it from, really important stuff. Of course, the best password management, I already said that. They even do now additional factors of authentication. They've always allowed two-factor. In fact, we even require that because one of the other things LastPass does is lets you set uh, policies, more than 100 different policies for your employees. And one of them is you have to use two-factor uh, we also have minimum requirements for your master password, things like that. So that they are also protecting your, themselves while they're protecting you. LastPass uh, multi-factor means they can use the biometrics on their phone, but they also, there's additional contextual authentication factors like geolocation or IP address. Again, you know, you've got shadow IT oversight, you've got enforceable policies, and you've got, you know, the IT knows exactly who's using what where, and I think employees actually like it when it's done in the background. They don't know, but they just, you know, there's this certainty that this is the right person to access your bank account or, or whatever. LastPass, of course, I should check these all off. You know they do it right. Steve Gibson verified this, but they they never, ever have access to your master password. Uh, the the your, your password vault is never decrypted off devices, only decrypted on device, encrypted before it's sent anywhere, LastPass cannot unlock it, and that's good because if LastPass can't get to it, it means hackers can't get to it either. The encryption is exclusively at device level. AES-256. <sighs> if, you, if you are off-site, if your employees are off-site, if you have vital resources they have access to, you have to have LastPass. And LastPass does the thing that's so hard in security. It makes it easier for your employees and more secure for you. LastPass.com slash twit. Find out how LastPass can make you more productive and more secure. LastPass.com slash twit. We thank LastPass for supporting us, for putting up with the putting up with me and all the hijinks in the LastPass studio. We promise we'll keep it clean for you. <laughs> I'm wiping down all the surfaces. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's do your uh, tip of the week, Mr. Therat. Yeah, you know, in in tandem with all this stuff going on with Windows 10 this week, you know, the new 19, sorry, 20H2, 21H1, the changes to the Insider program, you know, it occurs to me like over the past year or more, there's been a lot of complaints about the Insider program, complaints about Microsoft not taking the feedback from the program, releasing versions of Windows that include bugs that should have been found during the testing, blah, 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 whatever. And I, I think, I, I bet there's been a lot of people, especially listening to the show, who were probably initially really excited about the Insider program and kind of bailed on it uh, because they felt like their, you know, uh, it just wasn't working or whatever. But, you know, if you care about Windows, I, this might be a great, a good time to, um, to kind of rethink that, especially if you have multiple computers, you have a PC you can throw in one of the different channels and actually test it. I, this is the time, 
I think we need to be involved, you know, um, I don't like the way things have been going with windows and, uh, the way we can make it, I mean, I can make a difference on my website, I guess, Mary Jo can, but yeah, you, have a you know, the way pulpit. for us to, yeah, you got to participate, you know? Yep. And, um, there's a new person running the insider program. They are, we've already seen the first changes. Panos Panay is running windows now, which is really interesting. Um, uh, Rolf is designed, uh, is, uh, I'm sorry, involved now with the design of windows, not just surface hardware. Um, it, it, things are changing. Uh, I've heard from a friend at Microsoft that uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff that's going to happen in Windows in the next year. And that's not something I've heard otherwise, frankly. So, I mean, I kind of, I don't usually press people on stuff, but this one I was like, what? You know, I, I didn't ask them for specifics, but, um, you know, things are happening. And um, I, I would just ask, you know, if you're someone who was initially excited about the Insider program and you kind of stepped away from it, um, you know, maybe uh, take another look, you know. And this next year could be interesting. And if you are a participant, file the mm -hmm. reports, right? Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. Help help out. Don't just sit there passively saying, oh, this is yeah. wrong. Um, this is broken. Right. Now, there, there is a chorus, a uh, uh, <laughs> growing chorus of complaints that people put stuff into the feedback hub, and it's like it's going into a toilet or something. Um, again, I, I look, I certainly have my issues with the uh, the system as it is, but... Uh, the program, I've always thought the Insider program was a great idea. Um, I think what it really needs is more people and more people to be engaged. And that's, you know, how you do that. So just something to think about. Someday we'll all be insiders. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you're, yeah, I mean, in some ways we all kind of are. Yeah. I mean, if you look at how 24 is going. All beta but, testers for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your so, app pick of the week. I, it's so funny because this is, you're the third person this week to mention this. It's funny because I uh, Brad brought this up to me this morning independently, and I'm like, that's weird. I was going to use this as my pick today. But uh, the other day, Raphael uh, tweeted that uh, Affinity Photo, which I think a lot of people may have heard of, was half off, meaning it's $25 instead of the normal price of $50. Um, Affinity Photo is a, a really good alternative, probably just to Photoshop in general. I, I But I use Photoshop Elements, which is kind of the cheap version, but cheap for Photoshop means it's, you know, 100 bucks. Um. 25 bucks, right? So it's a good price. So I've been using it since yesterday. I will say it is an absolutely viable alternative to Photoshop. Um, the one thing I was worried about was the licensing. And so, in other words, one of the nice things, I get Photoshop elements from the Microsoft Store, and that means I basically have in, infinite installs. I mean, it's not really infinite, but I can put it on every one of the computers I have, no worries. And that's important for me personally because obviously I review a lot of computers, so I have this kind of set of applications I install every time and Photoshop Elements is one of them. I use it every single day. So I went to the website to try to figure out what the licensing was. And what I found was it's in the Microsoft store. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that. And so if you want to not, you know, get this thing, and by the way, it's on sale for $25 in the Microsoft store too, not just as a direct download. Um, if you intend to, uh, or if you're worried about using it on multiple computers, you know, that's how you do it. So it's kind of a tip and a pick. Um, if you think you might want this app, by the way, you can trial it. So you can download the trial from Affinity, and then I think the sale goes through the 20th. It's half off, but even at $50, this is a good deal. Um, and then if you think you're going to buy it, my recommendation is uh, buy it from the Microsoft Store, and then you won't have to worry about the installs. That's sweet. That's I, good app. I noticed it's 25 bucks on uh, Mac, too, so that's they must yep, be doing that's right. it. Sale everywhere. That's awesome. I think they, they have other products. I'm not familiar with oh, them. Oh, yeah, they but do. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think some of their other. Books. Now, do you remember Serif? Yeah. Didn't didn't they? Wasn't so, wait, don't don't say it, don't say it. Was this a desktop publishing? Yes. thing, Like in the eighties. Yes. Like, I, okay. Then yes. I and they've remember. kind of. I think it's the same one. It must be. <laughs> and they've just kind it's, of yeah, reinvented yeah. themselves. Okay. But they were like the the less expensive, you know, desktop mm -hmm. publishing. Um, yeah, and I think okay, so they must still have that product and uh, like some design, whatever it's called. And I it's bet called that's Affinity on Publisher. Okay, so look, if, 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 do, you, do you have it up? Yeah, I wonder if fifty percent off. Oh, it is okay. Fifty is it percent off. The same price? Is it? A um, let me see. Buy now. Uh, yeah, twenty five bucks. Yeah. So and they have a free trial as well. So okay. yeah, is I think this company, you know, they renamed themselves Affinity. But I think oh, they've, it's like stuff is 50 off, 50 they've, off. yeah, they've kind of reinvented themselves, but they've been around forever. Plus, the Shizzle style and brush pack also fifty percent off. So it's oh, and a comics <laughs> toolbox, yeah, handwritten font bundle. Man, it's Christmas time in Seraphland. 
<laughs> it really <laughs> is. Yeah. They do really good stuff. Um, not yeah, everything it's, it's is on sale, I see, but they do really good oh, stuff. A lot yeah. of it is, and yeah. yeah, I don't. I have. I've never tried any of the other stuff, but the photo, the Affinity Photo is fantastic. Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, Affinity Publisher, Twisted Brushes, uh, the Brush Packs. Yeah, almost everything's fifty percent off. The the yep. Christie's Comic Toolbox is only seven dollars. I mean, it kind of pays for itself when you think about it. They're French, you know, Seraph. <laughs> so it's Christy Dutrois. Leo, nobody's perfect. <laughs> and, uh, Christy's coming to box. You get uh, 36 raster brushes for Affinity Photo and Affinity Designers Pixel Persona. Oh, that's cool. Illustrate yeah. like Christy Dutrois. So, yeah, if you're, I mean, for you, Paul, this is, this is like... Well, I, so I will say for me personally, the thing is I did buy Photoshop elements in the store, right? So that means I could just use it forever. Right. You don't need. So right. even at $25, $0 is less than $25. That's but, true. But, I mean, what, <laughs> but, but this is, I, this is a great app. I, I, I'm still thinking I'm trialing it right now. So I, I may still just, it's, it is literally only $25. So I am certainly considering it. Uh, thank you, Mr. T. That's a great recommendation. I now understand why everybody's talking about it, because they're having a sale. Yeah. yeah, it worked. Enterprise Pick of the Week time with Mary Jo Foley. Uh, yes, this is a pick for anybody who's been wondering how Microsoft has been keeping everything running during COVID. Um, you know, they've had capacity issues with Azure, and they've talked before about how they've throttled some services to try to make it so that people didn't really notice any bumps um, along the way as more and more people started working from home and working remotely. But this week, uh, Mark Rusinovich, who's the CTO of Azure, and his, a number of people affiliated, affiliated with him and his team did a couple of massive blog posts about here's all the things we've been doing since the COVID pandemic began um, to try to keep everything up and running. And it's so detailed. It's oh, surprising how detailed this is. I'd be very interested. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so I did a little synopsis of it on my site because it's very lengthy. And, and it also includes a 45-minute video that Rusinovich did to explain how all this worked. But um, they, did, they did so many things behind the scenes to keep things going. Um, I'll just give you a few examples. They um, doubled the capacity of one of their own undersea cables for data that crosses the Atlantic. Mm. Um, they added 110 terabits of capacity to the Azure wide area network um, in two months. And they said usually that would take multiple months to do something like this. They added 12 new edge computing sites to the Azure network. They were moving workloads around all over the world so that, you know, when people started gaming at home using Xbox, they weren't taking over any of the capacity needed to run teams in other time zones. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, they did wow. so many like really interesting and crazy things. They even started having their engineers come in 24 hours a day but maintaining six feet of distance between them to set up new server racks in all their data centers just to keep everything going. Like that, this is how intense this was. Mm. So, you know, we, we are all just like, Oh yeah, everything still kept going, but it took a ton of work behind the scenes um, to keep it going. And if you want to know the details and you know, the reason I posted this for our readers on ZDNet and I think people on the show would be interested too, is there some lessons you could learn for your own data centers, even if you're not the scale of Microsoft, just some, just some things that might get you thinking about, Hey, here's something we could do to fix, you know, bottlenecks or traffic patterns, um, on our own, if it's affecting you in your own network. So I, I think it's worth a read through. For everybody. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. And that's not the only enterprise pick. No. And we were just talking about learning <laughs> and taking courses. <laughs> so uh, my pick here is uh, a new program announced this week by Microsoft and Udacity specific to machine learning. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm not really doing machine learning or I don't really care about AI. But, you know, one of the things that COVID shows um, is it's a good time for people who are at home to be able to take courses and upskill and learn new things. So to, this week, they, the Udacity and Microsoft announced two things. They announced 
a free true beginners course for people who don't understand machine learning and you want to kind of dabble with it. Um, and then they also announced a more advanced course that they call the nano degree program for people who are a little more experienced with machine learning, but want to get even more skills, um, in their toolbox. So the way, uh, oh, and 300 scholarships for the more advanced pr program too, for free. There's, as there's a little, uh, link to that in the post too. So if you want to learn about all of these different things, how you can get in, in on some of these new machine learning courses and scholarships, go to the Azure site, azure.microsoft.com and look for their blog and you'll see uh, a post by Julia White specific to these new Azure machine learning courses with Udacity. Nice. Very nice. Do you have a beer for us? I do. A very timely beer, I think. This is not a beer I have had, but I was thinking, you know what? With Juneteenth coming up Some this Friday, Friday yeah. um, it would be cool if there were any beers specific to Juneteenth. So I did a little research, and there's a brewery in Durham, North Carolina, that is making a beer called the Juneteenth Unfiltered Pilsner. Oh, it So it's like a German-style Pilsner. I love that style. Um, that they made specific specifically to commemorate Juneteenth. Um, it uses all North Carolina green and all the proceeds go to the Haiti Heritage Center and the Southern Coalition for Social Justice. So while you're drinking this lovely Pilsner, you will be supporting good causes as nice. well. And if you haven't heard, by the way, June 19th and 20th, there is a conference called the Juneteenth Conference. And you can find out about it, Juneteenth Conf conf.com and it's all about providing a space for celebrating black excellence in technology and if you look at the schedule they have up it's they've got some very interesting sessions um and it's free nice. to everybody nice. so, so you might want to check that out obviously as everything is it is it's all online and microsoft is one of the sponsors you know i have that. to say that uh <laughs> There are some real. I kind of don't want to go back to the old way of doing things, and I love it that all of this stuff is now accessible online. I know is amazing. It's pretty handy. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, I thought, frankly, that the build conference was the best ever because I could watch it all. You did, yeah. I know you can kind of yeah, get in I, on yeah. everything. Yeah. I thought they. Did I miss a good the. Job I with miss that. the in person. I miss the in person yeah. interaction. Oh but, yeah, you know, no, of course. But I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, I never go, so I, it was better. <laughs> it was it was better for me, obviously. And we'll find out next week because Apple's doing the same thing with their uh, Worldwide Developers Conference. We're going to yeah. be streaming that coverage, uh, by the way, 10 a.m. Uh, Monday Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern. I know you guys don't care, but uh, we will see what Microsoft. No, I, uh, I actually I care to. very much. Yeah. He cares. I totally do not care, but he <laughs> well, does. You care, no, hold on a second. You you care a little bit because they're hopefully probably going to announce this arm thing. That's right. And it's going to be very yeah. interesting to see how they handle it versus That's what right. Microsoft has done with That's Windows Center. Exactly so, I mean, right. from that perspective, this might be the one WWDC you will be interested in. Yeah. Plus, you'll be able to, you know, pick a new Maybe. iPhone. So. Guys, I'm kind of doubtful. I'm not all about Apple here, you know. All about Microsoft.com. That's Mary Jo Foley's <laughs> ZDNet blog. She joins us every week for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott is at therott.com. His books are at leanpub.com. We do the show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. Please stop by. Uh, you can watch us uh, or listen live at twit.tv slash live. Uh, watch the production of the show. You can also ask your voice device, you know, play twit live, and often it will. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Sometimes you get a Conway Twitty song. But that's close and just as happy. Uh, you can also... <laughs> You can also uh, get on-demand versions of the show at twit.tv slash www for Windows Weekly um, or on YouTube. There's a YouTube channel. Uh, or I guess the best thing to do would be get yourself a podcast app so you don't have to be a savage. You can just automatically get it the minute it's available. Just press the subscribe <laughs> button. No charge. No charge to you. Delivered absolutely free. What's the catch, Leo? There's this no sounds catch. sounds like a scam. What the do you catch, mean no charge? Here's the catch. You have to listen to the show. That's the catch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, you don't even have to do that. <laughs> but we'd like <laughs> just, it if you did. Just subscribe. <laughs> just subscribe. Don't listen. Subscribe and don't listen. I don't care. No, I want you to listen, obviously. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you all Thank for you. being here. We'll see you next week on Windows Weekly. Stay safe. 
Hey folks, I am Micah Sargent, co-host of Tech News Weekly right here on the Twit Network. Yes, Tech News Weekly is a show we do every week, Jason Howell and myself, where we talk to people who are making and are breaking the tech news. That's right, it's journalists, it's inventors, it's app makers, it's everybody who's bringing the tech news in a given week. It's all the stuff you want to know about in bite-sized chunks in a fantastic package. So be sure to subscribe. It's twit.tv slash TNW.